You are about to experience the Drunken Peasants podcast, the greatest podcast in human history. Please recognize that this podcast is designed to be amusing and entertaining, and thus we engage in satirical comments, exaggerations, and even dirty jokes. If you are offended by such things, please go away and die. If you enjoy this podcast, we ask that you help to support its existence by contributing to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash DP. Contributors get regular access to monthly private shows, special commentaries, Google Hangouts with the peasants, and more. If you don't want to do that, you can also support the show by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants to get a free audiobook and access to over 150,000 audiobook titles, including great selections on science and skepticism. And if you shop on Amazon.com, we strongly urge you to use one of the Amazon affiliate links in the description section of our videos. You can help support the show simply by using our link to buy things you are going to buy anyway. Now that we've got all that shit out of the way, sit back and enjoy the show. I'm telling you, you shouldn't come around here. We've got a situation, and let me be clear. I'll kick you, and I'll beat you, and I'll tell you it's fair. So beat it. <laughs> but you want to be bad, just beat it. Beat it, beat it, beat it. When Thor makes mac and cheese, you eat it. <laughs> it's, it's healthy if she talks back. Just creep <laughs> your hand back and give her a smack. <laughs> Show's over. Coming to you live from the frigid armpit of America. This is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ, bringing you opinions of the news from an altered perspective. Fuck it! Ah, hey man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. What the fuck are you talking about, atheist? Yeah, it's okay. You're it's nothing, okay. TJ. You're garbage. It's okay. I just want to no, no, be no, no, light. No, no, You're fuck garbage, TJ. <laughs> and now, here are your hosts. Ben and TJ. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. Hello. Ah, fucking thing sucks. To the Drunken Peasants Podcast, episode 181. Yeah, bitch. It's the same backwards as forwards. 181. 181, bitches. It's a fucking palindrome. So, since we're not going to have a show this coming Friday, we've decided to have Paul Zego on today's show. We'll have him on shortly. Mm. Let's have him on Nowly, man. Come on. Get his ass on here. Get him on the fucking show, Ben. All right. I want to talk to Paul Zego, man. You command, I obey. You command, I obey. <laughs> I wish that were true. Yeah, no, not even <laughs> it's close. not true. <laughs> I command, you might obey after some argument. If you decide that you actually want to do it. Paul! How's it going? Paul! What's the fucking deal, man? I want to eat your face, Paul! Come get it. I'm ready to Paul, have my face I eaten. just want you to know, Paul. Yes. You might think, you know, you grew that beard and shit, but I know them jowls are still under there, man. They are. They're in there. I, <laughs> I can <laughs> sense their presence. They're there. They're there. As surely as Darth Vader could sense the presence of Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, on the fucking uh, Death Star in Star Wars uh, New Hope. I could sense the jowls. <laughs> I could yeah. sense them. I could feel them. Radiating through this thick forest of manly facial hair that smells like pine trees and campfire. Yes. There are, they're, they're under there, though. <laughs> Hey, Paul, you know, uh, we're going to be in the same place in January, you know? Yeah. I, I know. I know. You know so I was. So let me just ask you a question. Okay. I need, I need an honest answer to this question. Okay. If, if I grab your jowls, will, uh -huh. I, will, will you punch me? 
Are you, am I no. going to get a punch? You think no. you're a punchy guy? No, no, no. People have been grabbing my jowls since I was a tiny little child. Like, here, let me show you. I'll show you some Proto Paul jowls, okay? Proto. <laughs> Proto just, Paul Jowl time on the Drug and Peasant Podcast. Oh my God, where did this energy come from? I don't know. Is uh, it the coffee? I think so. Okay. Ben Sorry. gave me coffee. The, the French vanilla situation. Oh yeah. But don't worry, <laughs> if I gotta take a shit, I'm just gonna shit my pants and sit here. <laughs> Fair enough. So here, here, let me see. I've got it. I'm just gonna put the URL for you here in the chat, just so you Earl. can see that like the jowls are legit. Like they're not just you know. A fucking rumor. Got a legitimate jowl situation. So you sent me some legitimate jowl situation? Yeah, this is this is baby Paul's ego jowls. Oh shit. Alright, I'm gonna get it pulled up here. Let's take a little looky loo. Right. <laughs> Jesus. Right? That's the most that's the jowliest child I know. in the history of mankind. It's, I had that like, same horrible ha haircut, by the way. So did oh, I. I had it too. And my hair was that color. Yeah. I, ha I had blonde hair when I was that age. My hair was like white. Similar to that color, but like way, way blonder. It was like pure oh, white. Oh, white? All, uh, you know, my uh, friend in back in my school days when I was, I don't know, around this age or whatever, maybe a little older. Yeah. Uh, I had a, fr a friend with a teenage brother, and him and all of his teenage hooligan friends would, would call me Bright White. It's like, <laughs> they saw me enter a movie theater, and it's like, hey, look, it's Bright White. Bright White was... coming down the aisle like a spotlight. <laughs> there was that movie in the 90s, Powder, about the, uh, yeah. the albino guy. I got that all the fucking time, like every day, because I'm just pale and sickly looking. Yeah, look at you. I know. You're, you're a pale man. I'm I'm pale too. We gotta have a pale off when we uh when we meet. Yeah, pale we'll, off. We'll compare. Yeah. See who's we'll whiter. Compare. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I before we move on, I had a quick thing that I wanted to sure. do. Sure. Sure, go a little, ahead. A little bit of Paul shilling. I don't know if you can put me full screen on the cam there. I I've will. Got, we can indeed. Hold I've on got one a little second. Show and tell tonight. Although my webcam really isn't going to do justice to this. So this is a, you can see, it's, it's an oil painting. Wow. By a dude named David Cardew. Um, I'll get a little closer so you can kind of see some of the colors and shit. It's really, really cool. He was cool enough to send this to me. Um, and he does commissions and stuff. Uh, so you can check out his stuff. I think, Ben, you put his links in the description, right? Yes, yes. The links are in the description. Awesome. He does commission stuff. He's based out of the UK, but he does international stuff as long as you're willing to pay, you know, a little bit extra for shipping. Um, but man, dude, the guy is super fucking talented. Yeah, and I've that's never awesome. Owned, I've never owned like an oil painting. And I love the fact that the first like fine art oil painting that I own is a picture of me. Um, that's that's awesome. You know what I mean? So I feel you on that. I really do. It really fits the Paul's ego montage. You know, Paul's what I mean? ego. Ego. Yeah. First so oil painting out, he ever yeah. bought was of himself. Of me, yes. So check out David Cardew. Links in the description. Get yourself a painting for fucking Christmas. It's awesome. He and painted that painting entirely with his jowls, by the way. He, he did. He did. He just put the brush between the jowl and the, uh, you know, chin. and <laughs> Just painted away. Yeah, he's just one of those very talented in individuals. Individual situations. Yes, yes. Uh, I want to hear. I'm gonna, you know, I want. Uh, I want to make a an album of Brett Keen covers. Yeah. Of songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm. I'm totally down. As well. I mean, I, I'm constantly like it's fucked up because it's ruining popular music for me. Because yeah, me too. I'll be driving. I'll be driving somewhere and I'll hear an old song that I like and I'm like, all of a sudden I'm singing it in Brett Keane's voice and I'm talking about beating Dorn. You know, like yeah. I just can't, I, I can't I'm, stop. I've had the same thing happen. I've also, I mean, like, I feel like a lot of good music has been ruined by it, but I feel like a lot of shitty music that I hate has been improved by me thinking of Brett Keane singing it. That's true. And making those like, references, you know? May not be a Lady Gaga fan, but 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 just imagine Poker Face and Brett Keens. Like, 
You know, yeah, you can like, just I can hear his like lips and jowls flapping yeah. as he's like, pop like, like poker you could turn, face. You could, turn it, you could turn it so easily into fucking puncher face. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's true. It's it's just it's the best. It's the <laughs> best. Will you do it for us real quick? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, if she don't feed you, don't feed you. You may have to punch her face. If she gets mouthy in the situation, <laughs> pop, 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 punch her face, pop, pop, punch her face, door, 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 door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just too easy. It's like, it's, wow. it's the lowest hanging fruit on the internet, but goddamn if it doesn't make me laugh every fucking time. Sometimes the lowest hanging fruit is the best <laughs> fruit. I, I believe we also have shirt guy here. What's up? Nice. Who gives a rat's ass? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, fuck Paul's ego, because shirt guy's here. Shirt guy. Shirt guy to the rescue. Yeah, I'm Finally, the shirt. show is good. Where is shirt guy? There he is. Yeah, he's hiding his head again for some reason. Yeah. What's wrong with your fucking face, shirt guy? You got some problem? No, I just don't care to show my face. Oh, he's he's anonymous in this particular situation. You're aware that people already know what your face looks like, right? Yeah, I know. Okay. Maybe maybe he's got a gigantic like eruptive zit. And he well, didn't cut myself up. shaving several times, so. Oh, you butchered it up up there. I think he was no trying bit. to slit his throat and end his tedious existence, but you know, he botched it and just got a few cuts on his face and now he's like, "Nah." Well, wow, that's uh, just another fucking reason why you shouldn't bother shaving. You know, yeah, shaving is for fucking losers, right? It is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. Only idiots shave. Mm -hmm. True facts. True facts brought to you by the Drunken Peasants. Uh, was there something we were going to shill, Ben? Oh, yeah. The Amazon thing. Yes. Hey, you know, uh, ever since we promoted our Amazon shit in the last episode, a bunch of you people have been doing it. So we figure might as well promote that again. And, uh, you know, it's like the holidays and bullshit. You want to buy your fucking, you know, wife a giant butt plug or something. Amazon sells that shit. Yeah. And if you use the Amazon affiliate links down below in the description section of this video, uh, we get some of that fucking money. Pieces of fucking shit. We want your money. The fuck. But, uh, you know, we don't need, uh, you don't need to give us it directly. You just fucking buy shit you're going to buy normally, and some of it goes to us just because we're us, and you use the right link. So do that. Yeah. yeah. Thus ends the promotion for using the Amazon affiliate links in the Drunk Peasants description section. Yes. Oh, yeah. And the elucidation of the reasons why you should. So, uh,. We got some we got some videos or something. Yes, I believe so. Let's see. I want to do a Stairway to Heaven Brett Keen song. <laughs> and it's because ever since it's because it, for the last few days I've had stuck in my head. Oh, uh, and you know what? By hey, the TJ. Stairway, Shut up for a <laughs> TJ, TJ, we should promo Galen's shit one more time. All right, here. Galen might die. Give him some money because, you know, he's been on our show numerous times and he's my friend and he's been on my videos numerous times and we're hoping he gets well enough to come on the show again and piss everyone else off, which is, you know, like his lot in life. You know, Galen, Galen can piss everyone off. He can find a way to piss off all sides of all arguments. That is his special uh, talent. But right now, he can't exercise it because his fucking health is too shitty. Yeah. So if you want to help Galen out, visit his GoFundMe page. Link in the description. Link is in the description. Uh, you know, if you, got, if you like Galen, if you hate Galen, if you're just totally aloof about Galen, give money anyway because he's my friend and it would make me feel good if, if, you, if I could help help. I gave him $111 and Scotty, just to one-up me, gave him 112 <laughs> And There you go. It was a literal one-up. And Galen's a really nice guy, too. Like, uh, on top of everything else, he's a good guy. And on top of everything else, we got to take a, uh, care of each other. 
in this world. This rugged individualism thing only goes so far in America. Anybody that lives in America knows that. Sometimes you've got to take care of each other. And if you've got yeah. a couple extra bucks laying around that you can toss towards Galen, uh, trust me, it's going to go to something really, really good. Yeah, the, the crazy thing about Galen is he's simultaneously the biggest asshole I've ever met in my life <laughs> and the nicest guy I've ever I, known. I absolutely love the Daiquiri story. Right. But the great thing about Galen is, like, Galen is, like, as a friend, will do, like, anything. Like, if I came to Galen and it's like, Galen, I murdered seven people, he'd be like, all right, well, we need to plan out your how you're going to get away with it. You know, like, he just, like, totally loyal to the and, fucking and core. You, and you, you, you thoughtless prick, melted marshmallows in his car. Yeah. Well, it's because <laughs> the story behind that, it was because uh, one time he found a random marshmallow and he got, like, very strangely upset about it. Like, these fucking marshmallows! And, <laughs> and we're like, holy shit, Galen really doesn't like when he finds marshmallows in his house. Let's go buy a bag of marshmallows and hide them all over his fucking house. And uh, we did. We like we hit it like I, we hit it like in obvious places, but also in very obscure places because we wanted him to find them like months and months uh, later. Uh, and <laughs> you know the funny thing was like when he came back, we had marshmallows literally like hanging off the the ceiling on strings, like so that they would just be like <laughs> levitating in midair. And it was like 30 minutes before he noticed any of the marshmallows. He's walking around, he's talking, he's like literally walking past these marshmallows that are hanging <laughs> in his path and shit. He's like dodging them and shit, but not noticing they're there for some reason. Yeah. And when he finally noticed, he's like, what the fuck? And then, you know, it, it, he, he just went like ballistically crazy and went on like a marshmallow hunt. But he was telling me even like, you know, three or four months later, he was still finding marshmallows. And around the time that, that f he finally stopped finding them, we did it again. And then <laughs> for the third time, we just filled his car with marshmallows. And uh, some of them did melt onto his seat. And <laughs> oh, that sucks. Well. You, know. you gotta break a few eggs to make a fucking omelet, you know what I mean? <laughs> in, you know, in all fairness, Galen's car was a piece of shit anyway. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the smell it really of, doesn't the matter. Smell of, the smell the of marshmallows marshmallow, only improved it. Yeah, only improved. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, it, you know, Galen just had to tell everybody, like, yeah, I, I, I was just eating s'mores in here, you know? Lots of s'mores. <laughs> That's why there's that powerful marshmallow so, odor. So, I believe... Order. Coming up pretty soon here, uh, we're going to have... Uh, Paul will no longer be on Fridays. He's going to switch days. Yeah, to this, this Monday, Monday, I believe, is the plan right now. To Monday? Yeah, yeah that's what I think. Yeah. So yeah, Mondays... Paul are going to become Mondays with Paul in Mondays January. with Paul. In yeah. mid-January, look forward yes. to <laughs> randomly changing the day. But uh, it's time for Troll or... Not a troll. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I, I'm going with that. Yeah, not a troll tonight. <laughs> you don't. You haven't even seen it. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know, Paul. I've got a feeling. Shirt guy, do do you have a feeling? No, I'll tell you after the video. Okay. No <laughs> feelings. Shirt guy, hey, shirt guy. Is I ripped. really need to make you aware of an epidemic. Uh, ladies, you're aware of it. Yesterday, I was almost in a really bad accident um, in my bedroom. <laughs> I was trying to get these jeans on, and I was like, you know, just trying to get all of it in there. Get and all fell of it in there. Dresser. I've got a big, big bruise right there. And, uh, I know my jeans shrank like three sizes. They fit me in the spring. Uh, it's fall now, and I know a lot of you ladies out there are, you know, struggling to get in your skinny jeans. And we have to stop this because people are getting hurt. I think there's probably even some guys getting hurt getting in skinny jeans. <laughs> Okay. okay. Well, do you maintain I mean, the not a troll, Paul? Yes, yes. I mean, she's got a fucking point. <laughs> she's got a the, point, huh? The skinny jeans. I can't even. Can you imagine what would happen to you or I if we tried to squeeze our asses into some skinny jeans? 
I'd fit perfectly, I think. Yeah. For fuck's sake. Well, okay. Well, that's fine because you've got the physique of a Greek god. Uh, it would be a fucking a nightmare for me. If anything, I'm too muscular to fit into the skinny jeans. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It would. Look, I would just look like an overstuffed sausage. And you could. There. There have been some deaths. I think <laughs> from skinny jean accidents. So, not a troll. I want to see you try to put on skinny jeans now, Paul, and see if you actually injure yourself. Oh, God. If they made skinny jeans and, like, a quadruple 16X, I'd totally do that for you. If they made skinny jeans in that size, could they really still call them skinny jeans, you know? Probably yeah. not. She get Paul some yoga pants, like the uh, like like the flesh tone color yoga yeah. pants. And Paul, if you if if you wanna <laughs> if you wanna create uh, an illusion, you know, you just shove a kielbasa down the front. Kielbasa. Just be like, oh, yeah. No, no. I was gonna say, if we do the yoga pant, th I'm totally down for the yoga pant thing, but it's gonna have to be the man yoga pants with an extra large dick pouch because, like, quite <laughs> honestly, like it is, we just gotta make room. We gotta make room. Yeah, well, there'll be plenty of room in that, I'm sure. Big Jim and the twins, you know what I mean? Big Jim and the twins. No. So, uh, how do we feel about this? Troll. Not a troll. I'd have to agree with Paul, not a troll. Although, I'm surprised she hasn't weighed herself since the spring. I doubt her pants actually shrunk. <laughs> Shit. Well, I guess that leaves it up to me. You're the tiebreaker, Ben. Break the know. tie, Ben. I, I don't know, you know? Break the tie. I don't know. You know, I... I the break. Oh. Oh, shit, it's a tie. There it is. Yep. Uh, that's why... That's sometime. yet another thing ruined by shirt guy, you know, because we'd have won. We'd have won. <laughs> the well, eyes would have it. Shirt guy, does sh sh shirt guy really count? I mean, come on. Yeah, he does. <laughs> shirt guy's the spoiler tonight. Ugh. He's the he's, he's the he's the lamest spoiler other than like when people put spoilers on the back of their like you know 2001 Honda Civic or some shit. You know, I really hope that neither of you guys after making this disastrous troll call tonight have to lose a family member or a friend to skinny jeans. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's a very real I'm concern. triggered. It is an epidemic from what I hear, so I mean, jokes are jokes and everything, but this is a serious thing. This is a serious matter. I, I know. We just trying to make light of it because we want more people to die. <laughs> Clear up traffic on the road a little bit more. So what are we <laughs> uh, like? Uh, not not like at the meetup. Let's talk meetup. Okay, cool. What what do we like? What what do we got planned? Like, are we just gonna hang out in a park somewhere and and get high and hope the cops don't come, or what's the uh, I think we're going to try to find, like, a bar or something. Yeah. So Sick. we can get drunk. But we got to find we gotta find one that's located somewhere where we're not all going to get stabbed, but also right. is going to be big enough, but not cr so cr too crowded, you know? Right. We, yeah. We got to find that happy medium of factors. Yes. Yep. Yeah. We got lucky. Uh, uh, we got lucky in England. Like, the place we went to there was huge. There was room. For like nice. for everyone that showed up, so we need to find something kind of like that, like a like a large place. Yeah, yeah. Man. I can't fucking wait, dude. I'm so stoked for January. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, yeah. We'll uh, we're gonna do some research here uh, after this up uh, Thanksgiving holiday is done. I'm gonna take a look and see. Maybe we can go to like a, a hotel, like um, uh, like convention-y thing or like a so, conference room yeah like well like one of the larger ones and like i think you can get like open bars at those well we we would have to know how many people were coming if that were the case well we could just like rsvp for like i don't know 100 or 150 or whatever i don't know <laughs> Yeah, It'd we'll be amazing, figure it out. Dude. It, uh, whatever we do is going to be fucking amazing. <laughs> I don't know, because there's just no way to know, because it was like when we did it in London, I feel like there was definitely more than 100 people. When we did it in I Amsterdam, can, there was probably 60 or 70. I can only imagine there's going to be a couple hundred in L.A. at least. Oh, God. It's going to be crazy. I mean, if you look at our at our viewer demographics, the majority are from California. But California is a big state, so they could be from anywhere. Yeah, but, but I mean, will. I'm coming from six hours away. If yeah. we build it, they will come. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's a, it's a pretty fucking easy drive. 
in California. That we're we're oh, pretty lucky with the, the interstates shit. and shit. I wonder if uh, someone's gonna come and shoot us though. You always gotta worry what about a, that. What a fucking way to go out though. That's true. You know, John Lennon, that shit. Please don't do yep. that. Any deranged psychos with guns. By oh, the shit. way, not the. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no 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 no! You go ahead. Well, this had nothing to do with the fucking hangout. It was just a random thing that popped into my head that I wanted to talk about. Do it. I was hanging out on Skype with Beyond Fear last night, right? We were chilling, watching movies and stuff. And she wanted to show me this picture that she'd been working on. <clears> she turned her webcam on. And simultaneously, both... And I'm not going to spoil the whole fucking thing because there's a video incoming. She turned her webcam on and it was angled towards the ceiling of her uh, uh, bedroom. And there was a fucking spider in the corner of her bedroom. I shit you not, as big as my fucking hand. Uh, yeah, she it, told us about that. It was, a, it was a funnel web spider. And I got the whole fucking thing on tape. I got the whole thing. Like, as soon, wow. as, as, soon as I saw what it was, I started fucking recording. And she's going to edit it up a little bit. And, you know, you can look forward to seeing that shit. It was insane. I'd never say, like, I'm never going to Australia after experiencing what I experienced last night. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way, just knowing all the crazy shit they've got there. The scariest part was she's got roommates, right? And one of her roommates comes in with a flashlight and shines the flashlight on the thing. And all of a sudden, it's got dimension. You can see all the legs and the shadow and how big it actually is. I scream like a fucking girl. <laughs> I, I, it was insane, this fucking thing, dude. So, you know, maybe we'll maybe we'll play a, a, a highlight clip from it on, on one of the peasants. Oh, coming God, up. I'm terrified even thinking about it. I feel like it's in this room with me now. It was insane. It and the funny thing was, she was talking to me about how, how like, she doesn't get, you know, people are always saying, oh, there's spiders everywhere, but we don't get many spiders. And then the fucking next day, I shit you not, that fucking thing crawls into, and, and she was all like, you know, you know what the worst thing about that is, Paul? If I hadn't turned my webcam on, I, that's right above my head where I sleep. She's like, I would have just laid down and that thing would have been hanging over my face all night. <laughs> No, uh, it would have it would have been it would have lowered itself and like crawled around. It's on, on your back, TJ. Don't say that. Uh, it's on your back. Don't. It's on your back, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you feel it there, like twitching around on your back? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, isn't that great? Don't do that, Ben. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, just wanted to remind everyone: we do have a, a PO box that you can send things to if you'd like. Uh, it's the Drunken Peasants, P.O. Box 767, Dublin, Ohio, 43017. Send us stuff. If we like it, we'll show it on the show. If it's stupid, we'll just throw it away. So don't send us ridiculous shit. Uh, yep. Yeah. And by the way, fuck all you faggots in the chat that are saying that I'm a pussy. You did not see the spider. When you see the spider, you'll understand. It was not even... a huntsman. It was not. Somebody in the chat said it's a huntsman. No, it was not a fuck. It was a funnel web spider. As big as my fucking hand. Deadly spider. Man, any spider that's bigger than a quarter, I'm scared of. So fuck that. They can call me a pussy. I don't care. Fuck a spider, man. I don't fuck with no spiders. Everyone watching, the spider is on your back right uh, now. Uh, shut up, man. You're disgusting. Fuck. If you try to reach it too fast, it might bite you. So you gotta go slow. <laughs> <laughs> the power of suggestion. <laughs> All right, let's play a fucking video. Up did, in this I have a question. Uh, the, the the spider scene in the Harry Potter movie did that freak you out? No, because once no. they're too, once they're because they're giant, they're like the size. Yeah, you know, once bear. they're like giant, you know, it's not as scary to me. Like yeah, you know, like Shelob in the fucking Lord of the Rings didn't bother me either. It's the real spiders that I worry about. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, with a giant spider, you know, I feel like any like the amount of terror you feel is proportional. So at least you you have like some dignity. If it's just like a small <laughs> spider that you can literally just step on and kill with ease and you're terrified of it, like butthole quivering ice down your spine fear, you know, then yep. you also have that indignity of being like, I'm scared of something that's like tiny compared to me that I can kill easily. Yep. Like it's, you know, in one-on-one -on -one combat, this thing doesn't stand a fucking chance. All right. Um... 
we're going to start off with news segments in this episode. Uh, first one we have here is Turkey releases audio. It says warns Russian pilot. So this has to do with the whole issue regarding uh, the Russian plane and Turkey. Mm, turkey. Mm, turkey. Flying I'll be enjoying me some turkey tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news here. Turkey's military has Woo. just released an audio recording. Oh, and shit. The turkeys have got a military. Thanksgiving's canceled. Turkish Everyone get yeah. the turkey. <laughs> the turkeys are rebelling. The tech. I knew Obama shouldn't have pardoned those turkeys. Piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> A fighter pilots issued to a Russian jet before shooting down the Russian warplane along the Turkish-Syrian border. Uh, this comes hours after the rescued Russian co-pilot said that there were no <coughs> warnings from Turkey before his warplane was shot down. Uh, now, in this audio recording, a voice is reportedly heard saying, and I'm just quoting this recording, this is Turkish Air Force speaking on guard, you are approaching Turkish airspace, change your heading south immediately, change your heading south. Uh, Russia's foreign minister says this, that Turkey's downing of its warplane Tuesday appears to be a planned provocation. Uh, Russia now says it will deploy defense missile systems to its air base on Syria's coast, less than 30 miles from that Turkish border. So, Guys, can't we all just, like, get along? <laughs> yeah, and, like, man. peace and harmony and stuff, bro? <laughs> peace and love, peace and love. Peace and like harmony and stuff. You know, how long is it before we just we just like destroy each other and the entire world? It like, really is kind of pedantic what's going on right now because like, you know, Russia and the United States have been doing this proxy warfare thing forever since the Cold War. It never really stopped and it's like getting hot again now where we're both supporting two sides of a fucking regime, uh, a regime change that once again is disastrous no matter which way it goes. And, you know, now it's just like, oh, I blew up your fucking jet, bro. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? You know, posturing bullshit. It's like, ugh, don't you get tired of this type of fucking news all the time? Yeah, but I mean, like, it's kind of the same thing that happens on YouTube anyway, you know? Yeah. Everyone's yeah, always just trying to like, you know, it's like my two dogs and shit. You see them fighting and shit, and then all of a sudden they'll be trying to like hump each other and shit. <laughs> and it's like, goddamn, knock that off. It's like, that's what, you know, these countries are trying to do. America and Russia trying to mount each other and thrust. Like, yeah, I'm the dominant one, bitch. You take <laughs> that shit. Yeah, man, fuck you. Let's take a listen to that audio recording. Why did you? In all fairness, that's really hard to understand. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's the entire clip right there. Change your heading south. They didn't do it. Bomb them. Yep. What so how do you feel about it? What a stupid fucking reason for World War Three to start. Yeah, World War, II, World War I started with a pretty stupid, uh, you know, that little assassination. The and shit. Arch, Archduke Ferdinand. Archduke Ferdinand. Yeah. yeah. Motherfucking Ferdinand. Franz Ferdinand. Yeah. I know that because there's a band named yeah, after it. It's true. All right. Uh, here's something uh, about Richard Dawkins. I guess he tweeted something about the clock boy. The clock boy. Yeah, the young Muslim boy that brought the shitty-looking clock to school and everyone freaked out. It's a berm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they could put $100 million. You could put $5. Neither way, they're out. <laughs> attorney Jerry Lofton sat down with me after looking at the letters from Ahmed Muhammad's attorney, demanding $15 million from the city of Irving and Irving ISD. They're just trying to put a number thinking that they can uh, bluff somebody into some. Cities don't bluff, nor do police forces. The letters argue that the school and police broke policy every step of the way when a teacher thought a homemade clock Ahmed brought to school was a bomb. They interrogated that boy for nearly an hour and a half. I talked to Ahmed's attorney on FaceTime, who told what me if the, Irving doesn't pay up with clip? written apologies in 60 days, they go to court. The, entire the, like, I interrogated him? I interrogated him for an hour and a half. So <laughs> what? What does that have to do with anything? public apparatus uh, from two different governmental units made so many conscious, deliberate decisions to ignore somebody's rights. 
Meanwhile, Ahmed and his family moved to Qatar in the Middle East. They say afraid to come home from threats now aimed at the returnee. But Ahmed is an American and ready to be a Texan again. And whether you feel for the teen or not, Lofton tells me his case is nothing more than a shakedown. I'll try to push or pressure some kind of a settlement, but it's not going to happen. They may give him some walking away money, but that's all. Walking away money. I could use some walking away money. Yeah, I'll, I'll walk away from stuff. All right, I'll I'll uh, I'll leave YouTube if someone gives me fifteen million dollars, gone yep. forever. You heard it here first. Fifteen mil, I'm gone, gone from the YouTube. I'll walk away. I You'll don't never care. see me. You'll never see or hear from me again for five million dollars. I'll one up you. You can yeah, you can get rid of Paul for five million. Get rid of me for fifteen mil. How, what's your yep. price, Ben? Um, f fuck. How about f uh, tree fitty? Tree fitty. Tree fitty. <laughs> All Ben needs is tree fitty, and he'll leave. He'll leave YouTube forever and ever. Three hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> I don't know with this Ahmed Muhammad shit. Like uh, both sides end up sounding like such butt hurt little bitches that I just. Don't I, this was really supposed anymore. to be about Richard Dawkins, though, man. Sometimes the CNN yeah, videos where, don't what download. What the fuck did Richard Dawkins? Do you see do what it says here? Do you see what it says? Yeah, it says Richard Dawkins clockboy tweets draw ire. Yeah, it had nothing to do with any of I that. I know it's it's so stupid. Fuck you, CNN. Fuck you, CNN. That had nothing to do with Richard Dawkins or his tweets. All right. Uh, I think this will at least match. Newborn found in nativity scene. Heard in the distance a baby crying. It was a sound sweeter than any organ or choir could what? dare mimic. That first Hold drew on. the attention. The sound of a screaming baby is more beautiful than a choir or an organ? No. It's annoying yeah. and horrible and grating. Says the 20 year old news anchor woman who's never been around children before. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you want to throw it down a fucking well or something. Fuck yeah, that. It's awful. Ugh. It's like a well, little miniature still... air raid siren. There's nothing worse than the parents speaking in the high pitched voice. You know, oh, baby the talk. The cuckoo, gaga, boo boo yeah. bullshit. <laughs> And then That's they wonder exactly why, like, their, their children, when they turn two, are histrionic, high-pitched, shrill little demons. Water-headed idiots. Yeah, water-headed <laughs> little morons. Because they, you know, their whole fucking developmental life, you've been speaking to them like this. Boo, 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 doo, 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 doo. <laughs> what the fuck do you think they're going to grow up to be? Yeah, I talk man. to kids like they're little people. I talk to them like they're little pieces of shit. <laughs> Actually, I just don't talk to him. ...of a custodian here at Holy Child Jesus Church to a nativity scene near the altar. Well, Jesus said he was coming back. Apparently, you know, here he is. And what he found inside was truly remarkable. The baby was uh, still umbilical cord connected, um, so it was truly a, a, a newborn baby. Father Christopher... What he found was truly a miracle. Someone abandoned their child. What a beautiful, what a beautiful thing. Penu and others were quickly called to help the abandoned infant left in the manger, which wasn't supposed to be set up for another couple weeks. God has a way of working mysteriously because what? I believe that. That's his kid. Oh my God, dude. Sounds what a more like a head. piece of shit mother. Yeah, like yeah. God has his way. You know, sometimes, you know, he has a piece of shit mom just give birth in the church and cut her own umbilical cord, leave it in a manger and just get the fuck out of there. Sometimes that's just how God works, man. It's yeah. beautiful. When this woman who came in with this child saw this crash, this empty home, this home in which we'll welcome Jesus in just a few short weeks, uh, I believe she found in it a home for her child. A healthy 5 uh, pounds, 17 inches long, the mm. precious little boy was taken to Jamaica Hospital, where he's now <laughs> doing just fine. In the meantime, authorities are now concerned about the well-being of the boy's mother, who was captured briefly on church surveillance cameras. I, I, I feel for the mother, for her, no. uh, for her sorrow and for her... Why? Here's an idea. If she really wanted to abandon the baby, like, plenty of states have laws where you can, like, drop the baby off at the hospital and there's, like, no questions asked or anything. Or you could drop it off at a fire station. You know, there's plenty of places 
you can leave the baby and alert people and they'll come and take it and, you know, do whatever. Yep. That, that don't involve leaving the baby in a fucking crèche in the middle of fucking November to fucking possibly die of exposure unless somebody just happens to walk by and hear the sound sweeter than any choir. <laughs> but, you know, but you know, she, she was, she saw the Jesus scene and she put it there and it's, oh, wow. You know, I mean, like, it, would anyone be praising her if she just, like, put it in a, in a garbage can in, like, a mall or something? You know, no. <laughs> But God works she, in mysterious ways. Because she put it in a fucking manger and shit. I toss my orange Julius cup into the shitter, and uh, there's a baby. I, I swear to God, I heard a baby crying. It's the orange sweetest Julius. sound, like a choir. I, I heard a sound sweeter than any generic top 40 bullshit being blared down from a speaker system, you know. I, it was it was the baby. Does of he look the garbage like, can? Does he look like he's giving a B, or getting a BJ or what? Yeah, dude, he looks like he's right in the middle of saying, "Oh fuck yeah, oh fuck yeah." Uh, Wish his tongue was lolling out to the side, though. <laughs> oh, it's not going. Is it done? No. Uh, you know the feelings that she must be going through. To hear something like this totally shocked me. And I've never heard anybody living a newborn, and I've been here for 25 years. Longtime parishioner Evelyn Plaza says this church is like family, and already. So yeah, it's not really a common everyday occurrence, you know. I've been here 25 years; it's the first time this happens. Like, yeah, I would imagine probably so. If it was happening all the time, people would be like, "Why does this keep happening here? Is it the same woman just leaving baby after baby?" Several members have stepped forward and offered to adopt the child. To me, I call him Baby Jesus already. <laughs> so he's oh, wow. being like Charlie's born. That's the All way. right, you know, maybe this mom did know something. She's just like, I, you know, if I put this baby in a manger, a bunch of these religious idiots will just be like, oh, it's a holy child. Wow. The story of this child touches me. It is, it is a pretty smart little ploy. Like, let the child gain a bunch of notoriety and then show up and claim your parental rights and cash that check. Yeah, like... Let it be raised as the holy child and then come back later and be like, yeah, that's my son. Away in a ranger. A, an autobiography of the stupid fucking bitch that left her child in a fucking <laughs> nativity display. But for some reason, we're all kind of okay with it because she did it in a way that symbolically pleases us. <laughs> You're exactly right. Like what you just said sums it up completely. Yeah. <laughs> I look at it. In the manger of Holy Child Jesus Church. Yeah, well, pretty stupid people. Best of luck, little Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is gonna have a uh, an amazing time in foster care. By the way, talk to any foster kid; they'll tell you what it's like growing up in foster care. So. It's good times. Next video we have here is uh, Donald Trump repeats controversial 9-11 claim. Neat. Donald Trump. He comes out to we're not going to take it. Comments. Yeah. Isn't starting now. It's totally the spirit the of that song. calling all day, all night. They want to find out, did Trump make a mistake? Now Trump is saying he... And of course the answer is no. Never. <laughs> watched from his Manhattan apartment as people jumped from the Twin Towers on 9-11. One time I thought I made a mistake. Turns out I was mistaken. Did I have they a just say Trump watched? He watched. He sat in a lawn chair in the street and jacked off as the dust cloud billowed towards him. Oh, September yeah. 11th, 2001, I was sitting in my penthouse uh, sipping on uh, ten thousand dollar Moe, and I happened to notice a plane hit the World Trade Center. So immediately my pants hit the ground, and I am masturbating furiously. And I watched those people jump from the window. And I'm telling you, when that first mother of four splattered all over fucking Wall Street, I came all over my window. It was the most amazing orgasm that I ever had. It was huge. <laughs> it was huge. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful, Paul. You are a that poet, specifically sir. specifically was aimed at the World Trade Center because of the beauty of the whole downtown Manhattan. 
And I watched as people Wait a jumped. Minute. And I uh, watched. Hold on. Did you say it was because of the beauty of downtown Manhattan? Uh, that's that's why his apartment was facing it. Oh, okay. So he's a, he's gonna claim that he could see people jumping out of the World Trade Center as it was on fire and falling apart. Um, but in a moment here, we'll show how far away Trump actually lived from the, you know, the epicenter of the attack. Okay. The second plane come in. While people were seen jumping from the towers that day, Trump's apartment in Midtown is roughly full. Okay, so uh, uh, you're a liar. Hey, man. Yeah. I have you, you eyes like Russia an eagle. I could see anything and everything. I'm like Superman. I mean, you could probably see the buildings, but there's no fucking way you could see people j jumping from them. He had binoculars, Ben. Oh, yeah. He well, had a pair of binoculars, which he often used to look at the tower and to also ogle the cleavage of his daughter as she left the building. Four miles from where the World the Trade Center's tower stood. Many people jumped. And I witnessed it. I watched that. Trump also stubbornly defending his widely debunked claim that there were large crowds in New Jersey celebrating the day of the 9-11 attacks, pointing to a line in a Washington Post story published a week later that said law enforcement had detained people allegedly seen cheering on rooftops in Jersey City. Holding tailgate style. Tailgate. You know what that means? Tailgate. That means football games, Ohio State. <laughs> Thousands of yeah, he was in I Columbus. Love, I love how he has to explain to people what a tailgate is because he probably just found out himself. You know, a tailgate, uh, a barbecue, hot dogs, you know, a tailgate. He said Ohio State. It reminds me of uh, the time that uh, Pat Robertson was, like, confused about ma what mac and cheese was. He, well, uh, he was like, is, it, is that a black thing? Yeah. Like, uh, wow. Are you really that out of touch? <laughs> That's amazing. I think it's like a southern thing. Pretty sure. Yeah. But it's kind of like an everywhere thing. Well, I mean, have, oh, hold on. We have to do a screenshot. <laughs> I love when he purses his lips like that. Yeah. Oh, Trump. Oh, Trump. Oh, I have to get uh, the mini window out of there for a good screenshot. All right. Screen Enjoy shot. everybody. We gotta get moving though. Let's see. People right. in parking lots <laughs> on roofs. While government officials and even the reporter who wrote that story say the investigation uncovered no such celebration, Trump points to his Twitter followers as evidence to the contrary. So all of a sudden. I'm getting all of these tweets. I saw it. I was there. I was this. I... But I saw it. I saw it. The GOP frontrunner's dubious claims don't it. appear to be damaged. I fucking saw it. I was there. I looked at it with my own eyes. I could see that from my other uh, building that I have. I looked upon New Jersey, and upon the rooftops, I saw the people cheer as the towers fell. <laughs> I love that the, the, this woman, the... the newswoman is right in the middle of saying, you know, Trump's controversial statements have not seemed to harm his numbers. Trump at this point could say like, Bigfoot is real. I've met him. Uh, the Loch Ness Monster is real. I have the very best people in the world, the very best submersible makers in the world. We're going to bring Nessie out of Loch Ness and bring her to America for all the children to see. It's going to be huge. Like, he could say <laughs> shit like that and people would still fucking vote for this guy. Like he's... He's a train. He's a freight train at this point. Judging him in the eyes of voters. A new Quinnipiac University poll shows Trump leading the field with 25% support in Iowa. But he has a new chief rival, Texas oh Senator my Ted God. Cruz. Who's worse? <laughs> who's, who's worse? <laughs> Look at Ted Cruz's face. That's the face he makes when he catches sight of himself in the mirror every morning. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Look at that fucking mug. It'd be better if they were facing each other in that picture. It would. I mean, be. like could, they did they just I mean they like sought out the least flattering photo they could find of Ted Cruz. Yeah, that's just I mean, terrible. There are no flattering photos of Ted Cruz. There's better ones but, for sure. Like you 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 did I mean like you re they really like 
intentionally stabbed his dignity with that photo. Like, really let's did. get a photo of him going like. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude. He looks like he just stuck his dick in some hot soup or something, man. <laughs> he does. He does. Ow. <laughs> ...at 23%, doubling his support from a month ago. Dr. Ben Carson rounds out the top three at, at 18%, Carson. dropping looks 10... Like ben... He looks high. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he either looks high or like he just gambled on a fart and lost and shat a little so <laughs> shat himself like, a little bit. Uh oh, maybe both. Yeah. Points from October. So far, Trump has offered only kind words toward Cruz, but he's hinted that might change if Cruz started to rise. And Ted Cruz, Senator Cruz, has been so nice to me. I can't hit him. I may have to if he starts getting like really close. Seems like he's close. I may hit have him. To. Hit him. Nah, Cruz is just gonna like be like uh, Trump's running. He looks or just shit, like probably. McCarthy right there. Look at him. He looks just yeah. like McCarthy in general. I think that was you know the universe's way of making sure that we knew he was an evil scum fuck. It's like let's give him the face of McCarthy so people know he's evil. But unfortunately, America's so stupid. We're like, oh, he's Canadian. Ooh. Look at this yeah. jubilant old woman standing off to the left of him, just in mid-clap. Yay! I would fucking Shit. love, I would fucking love for Donald Trump to turn on Cruz and attack whether he's even eligible to run for president. That would be so funny. Yeah, go after the Canadian thing. Trump is the, the just the stupid one to get away with it. Yep. It would be perfect. I hope it happens. All right, moving on. Everyone's favorite segment. Crazy people. Yes. Ah. Oh. oh. Shit balls. Goodness gracious. Oh me, oh my. Uh. Have you seen, uh, I believe his name is uh, Tommy Sotomayor. Sotomayor? Uh -uh. Uh, he, he, he does videos on YouTube. Here, here's one of his videos. I'm sure you'll, you'll like it. Oh, okay. Uh, Utah transsexual commits suicide by jumping in front of a dump truck after Facebook. Wow, the title's so long. After, <laughs> after Facebook, Facebook goodbye, goodbye post. post. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Da, 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 da. Lame ass news, lame ass yeah. news, lame ass news. Yeah, we'll just wait till yeah, yeah. he actually appears on the screen. Jesus. Here. What's with all these horrible channels with these crazy long intros these days? Oh, he gets, oh, a, dude, he gets like a countdown. countdown. Is that really necessary? Happy Football Sunday. Welcome to TNN News. Welcome. Welcome. You we got a story that's been trending. I saw this myself. One of the few stories I actually see myself since people normally send them to me. This story on, is what? about a transgender person. Okay. They don't even. Da -da -da. The person you see behind me, name, name is Ashley Holcomb. Hulk Make sure Hulk I'm saying this Oh, Ashley man. Hallstorm, this is just professional as shit. Yeah, you know if it's you're gonna, TNN. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna have this big crazy intro and like try to do this backdrop with this professional mic and shit, you can't then come on and be like, did about a, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah, oh, I mean, oh, 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 is uh, a transsexual uh, individual, I guess, named... At hold up, hold up. I can't read my own shit that I set up to make this video. Hold up. <laughs> Ashley. Is that Ashley? Fuck, man. Hold up. I'm just going to have to look this all up again. Just give me a sec, guys. <laughs> the fuck, man? Like, well, I'm done. <coughs> Get Hogan, your Utah. shit together. And Ashley Hallstorm went on to her his Facebook... Her, page, his, who's... And wrote a post... Just decide. Right before killing him herself. 
<laughs> okay, look. No, no, hold on. Just decide, all right? Just decide, okay? Decide which you're going with. Don't do him, her, it, she, he, me, z. Just, just fucking pick one and stick with it. You know, uh, and, uh, I, we did we did learn that she he uh, stepped out in front of a garbage truck, and that little pieces of his her uh, mangina were found <laughs> all over the scene. Like, what the fuck, dude? Is there, is this really going to be the albatross around your neck for the rest of this fucking video? <laughs> that you can't just call this, call this person what she wants to be called? Yeah, it's pretty sad. This is like... I love the level of incompetence that we're seeing, especially after that big, epic, like, intro with a countdown and shit. Like, TNN news. You're going to see some official fucking news. We got a countdown and shit. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 him, her, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, ooh, uh, Ashley, uh, I don't know if I'm saying this right. Uh, <laughs> God. Just fucking talk, all right? Here's you know? a post that Jesus he, Christ. Wrote. From he a very wrote. young age, I was told that people like me are freaks and abominations. That we are sick in the head and society hates us. The 26-year-old wrote about his, her lifelong struggles with being a transgender. This made me who I was. I tried so hard to be just like everyone else, but this isn't something <coughs> that you can change. What a monster. I know. Piece I can't stand shit. to live another day. So I'm committing suicide. Please share my final words. I believe my last words can help make change that society needs to make. So one day, there will be no others like me. After posting his or her goodbye message and uploading a new profile mm. pic, which you see there, Hal Storm Strum, Hal Strum, then drove to nearby Logan Hail Storm. where police say he, she walked into traffic uh, and was hit by a dump truck on the highway. <laughs> Policeman Gary Jensen. You know, I hate, why do you have to fucking go in front of the damn dump truck? I mean, like, there's so many ways you can kill yourself. Why are you going to fuck someone that's, else's life up, too? That's similar to the transgender right. person in Ohio. What is it with transgender people, like, walking into traffic? Making their, like, traffic suicides. Like, yeah. You realize you're... I want to traumatize some yeah, poor, innocent trucker for the rest of his life, too. You're forcing someone else to involuntarily kill you. I, I, I Yeah, I do take issue with yeah, that. Yeah, like, just... There's plenty of... I mean, like, you shouldn't kill yourself at all. Right. But... If you're going to do it, don't fucking involve other innocent people who don't want to fucking do that or have that be part of their fucking life, okay? You know, yeah, it's not fair he, that some poor dump truck driver has to have fucking nightmares for the next fucking two years because your ass couldn't think of a, of a way not to involve the public in your suicide attempt. Yeah, well, successfully. I mean, like, honestly, like, just if you're going to walk your he pussy out in front of a... <laughs> uh, you know, if you're going to kill yourself... <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do it and don't involve somebody else in he she's you know decision <laughs> said he believed that the act was intentional simply because the dump truck tried to swerve and avoid the collision saddened by how storm how strum's uh, decision oh my god it's not that fucking hard shit how storm house the roman nom nom uh decision uh and about the importance of supporting people dealing with transgender issues. Several of his, her friends are hosting a candlelight oh my God, fuck. for him, her on... <laughs> I oh cringe every time. God. Every fucking time. He, she, him, her. You know, if he was just going with the male pronouns, I could be like, well, you know, it's just because he's an asshole, whatever. If he was going with the female pronouns, I'd be like, well, that's cool. At least he's respecting that. But this, like, him, her, he, she, it's like... Do you uh, not? I mean, that's just so fucking cringeworthy. Every time it comes out of your mouth, I just like, Ugh. Ugh. and it's just the sh it's just the cherry on top of the shit Sunday that is this unwatchably bad fucking video. <laughs> he's got all this fucking equipment and shit. You know, he's got the boom mic and the fucking you know remote monitor so people can backdrop. see what he's talking about. It looks yeah, good. Some, I mean, 
I mean, it looks all right. I mean, for, you know, he probably did it himself. He didn't have anyone do it, like, professionally. I bet it was his mom. I have a feeling it was his mom. I don't know about that. But, I mean, it's a cool looking setup. He's got, like, the monitor in the background. Sure, it ain't bad. I mean, whatever. But, you know, like, he's got a lot going on here that seems like he's got it together. But then, like, his delivery, terrible. Just hideously bad. But whatever. Saturday night. They've also started a GoFundMe. Okay. Why did he say that as if it was he like, like part of some scheme? He looked you know? at the camera like, GoFundMe. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this transgender uh, person just killed themselves because they wanted to make some money. You know how that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just, it was all part of the plan from the very beginning. It was a false flag operation. Ashley, how to sure strum to help house is, is out there. Pay, pay for you know, expensive. <laughs> he so she is just raised- hiding in a cabin in the woods, collecting that GoFundMe money. You know, they just threw a, a dead pig out in the road, and you know, and no one's been the wiser. But I figured it out. I uncovered the consp- conspiracification. You know, twenty seven hundred dollars, and the goal was thirty two hundred and fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. Money wrote Ashley was always a beautiful person inside and out, and this is a true fact. Don Blakely, one of the closest fi- her, one of his her closest friends in Logan, told the Herald Journal. I wish she he could have seen it uh, his herself. Uh, Everything seemed to be good. Uh, I wish uh, she he I wish she he could have seen it for his herself. <laughs> oh, oh my you fuck. Water headed retard, please jump in front of a dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> man, oh man. She he seemed shit. sad or hurt or confused. The whole thing is such a shock to me. The word of Halstrom's death spread on social media and the LGBT activists in Utah search for answers. LGBTQ RSTUV WXYZ youth need our love and support, Troy Williams, director of equality of Utah, told people. Okay, if you're gonna like be quoting people, I don't think you can just like Add stuff to the what's supposed to be W X Y Z. Like I understand, I understand making that joke, but you know you shouldn't make it while you're actually quoting the person. You should actually quote what they actually said. Actually, is this called the ignorant fuckstick show with T J Sotomayor? (laughs) Is this called the 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 guy who just gets progressively more cringeworthy as the video goes on and really needs to sell some of that overly priced fucking gear that he's got all over his desk and get a fucking job. Yeah, this ain't going to happen for you, man. This ain't going to happen for you. You're just you're not even you're not even fucking uh noteworthy enough to be offensive. You're just cringeworthy. <laughs> it's so painful. But we don't have a lot of videos, so Better listen to some We more. need to create a culture where all youth know that they are valued and that they have beautiful gifts to offer the world. It is important that youth know that they are, that there are resources like the Trevor Project available uh-huh. in times of crisis. Uh-huh. Sadly, rural communities often lack affirming for the LGBTQRSTUV. Really? Again, it was like barely even kind of almost approaching funny the first time. And you're really going to repeat it like it's some fucking A material. Like that's some gold shit. Like, man, I bet they, I bet they, the laughter from the last time I said it is just barely subsiding. Now I'm going to say it again and then fucking light that fire up people's asses again. TJ, TJ Sotomayor, it's time for some real talk. Uh, it's not working. Whatever it is that you had in your mind or whatever it is that you see in your mind when you're watching your videos, that's not what they're coming out like. This is this is this is worse than a fucking joke. You need to pack it in, bro. This is not you. This is this is not for you. Um, <laughs> maybe you should have been driving the dump truck that hit he she. 
Clearly, <laughs> we have a. You, maybe you'd be a better truck driver than you are a news personality because this isn't working for you. May, maybe, uh, oh. maybe he's just thinking of the candy bars, you know, Hershey's, right? <laughs> yeah. Work to do. Halstrom's final post, which has been shared. Only it would be him she's for him, I guess. Mm -hmm. They need to change. Hershey's chocolate is transgender now, so we changing its name to him she's chocolate. Ha ha ha! I'm funny. More than sixteen hundred times is heartbreaking in its simplicity and honesty. Yeah. Get to the point. Are you These gonna are going to be my final words? The reasons why I've decided to do this Here you go. is Here because go. I'm transgender. He she. No, that's not him. Uh -oh. It wasn't until I was. Is he gonna like editorialize on this, or is he just gonna keep like reading quotes and being like mocking and shit? Yeah. It's funny that I found I'm out I wasn't alone. I'm just. And gonna I'd hope that I would finally I'm be read able. Somebody to... else's news story, and every once in a while, I'm gonna look at the camera and roll my eyes. Like yeah. that's basically this guy's show. <laughs> Yeah, and occasionally he'll, like, try to make a lame joke. Not actually, like, make a joke after the quote, but try to, like, add a joke to the quotation, thus basically violating any sort of journalistic ethics that could possibly exist and invalidating his aspiration of being a news program completely. <clears throat> Not I, that it wasn't derailed I guess by his he, uh, utter lack of charisma and inability to get through a fucking sentence. I guess he has a lot of subscribers, though, believe it or not. Well, they must be... like uh, I think like 170,000. All of Brett Keane's water-headed idiot children listen to this show. <laughs> yeah, he's, the, he's like the Pied Piper of waterheads. He just like... <laughs> comes fiddling into the fucking city and all the little water-headed idiots come out and hit the fucking follow button. I, I you know, for some reason, I think it's because they were carrying buckets of water, but I see the, I see them walking kind of like the brooms from uh, Fantasia and yeah. shit. Yeah. Like all the water-headed idiots don't don't <laughs> Finally came out as transgender and began transitioning. <laughs> ha <laughs> that happiness wasn't enough, he, she said, to get past society's uh, attitudes Can we skip a little forward and see if he actually fucking has an opinion on any of this? He, she, it will. Jesus, look how long this fucking video is. For fuck. It's disgusting. Alright, All right, let's see. Get about you. Okay. Let me tell you something for those who didn't know. Over 500,000 men every year commit suicide. Okay. Yet you don't see any commercials about this, do you? Nope. You don't see I've any... I've never seen uh, any commercials about transgender suicide either. Commercials. What kind of commercial are they going to put on TV anyway? <laughs> Ads, awareness. Ask your doctor if suicide is right for yeah, you. Yeah, transgender it's bringing suicide. This. Most of you guys have never heard this stat until I just gave it to you. Yeah, plenty of people have heard that stat. And yeah, no one gives a shit either, do they? I don't know. Because as a man, no one cares what you do, what you go through. Your life belongs to the government or some whore. That's the truth. What? They don't care if they put you in jail. <laughs> the government or some whore. <laughs> is, he like a, is he like a MGTOW or something? Sounds no, like. I don't think so. Sounds like he might be, at least a little yeah, bit. Well, I don't get the whole, the, your life belongs to the government or some whore line. Whatever. Because Some of child whore. support, they don't care if they put you in jail because you couldn't pay alimony. They don't care if they put you in jail because you ran a red light. They don't oh, give a shit a if you get cow. shot in the middle of the street. Got they it. don't care Got if they it. send all of That's all I needed to know. He's a fucking MGTOW. So this guy, his whole fucking MO, literally, is um, he's angry because he feels beholden. Or no, no, he feels like he, he has some sort of rights to the pussies of, of, of women. And when women use that as leverage as they have since the dawn of fucking mankind against him, he looks at it as if it's some sort of slight to his manhood and, and comes and makes these YouTube videos. You know, in, in, in all fairness to women everywhere, you know, you know, if I was a woman, I wouldn't want to fuck this guy. He can't even get through a goddamn YouTube video. Come on. Well, that's a, that's a MGTOW for you. You can always tell a MGTOW immediately just by looking at them. You can tell this guy. Like, th there's no way any reasonable, level-headed woman allowed him to buy all that bullshit for this fucking YouTube thing he's doing. If he had a reasonable, level-headed person in his life, they would have stopped him immediately and gone, Dude, this is not for you, Tommy. This is, this is not a good look. Ben says that he has 170,000 fucking subscribers. 
So that's, apparently there's something we don't know, Paul. That's depressing. Appar yeah, Lord, I mean, you like, never make it back home. <laughs> this is the life of a man in America. They wouldn't even give this man's masculine name. They keep giving his female name. And uh, that's because that's the name she wanted to be <clears throat> called. You know, so... If you really care so much about respecting her, then maybe you should respect her decisions. You know, even if you consider her to be a man, uh, she didn't. So if you're really so concerned about the media didn't even want to identify her by the name that she didn't even identify as, that's bullshit for some reason. No, it's not. It's actually totally logical. You're a dipshit. I do like the fact that now that he's actually just talking off the cuff, he's actually making eye contact with the camera and yeah. spitting out sentences at a reasonable pace. You the know, charisma it, factor rose by like ten when he uh, apparently apparently the brother don't read good. Yeah. Um, so whatever. You know. Took Donnie Bonix work for me. Let me tell you why I don't have any kind of love for these idea of transgenders. Yeah. Because I think I'm rich. Do I get to run around and say I'm rich and force you to call me rich, treat me as rich? Let me eat at motherfucking restaurants I can't afford. Give me a fucking house I can't pay for because I think I'm rich and I'm going to force the rest of the world to believe that shit. Huh? <laughs> what? Oh, man. Oh, no. That's fucking great. This guy's the got anger. Sex. The He's anger. Got such mommy didn't. Mommy didn't love me. Syndrome. It's so fucking apparent that this guy's mother just didn't fucking have time for him, and now he just hates women. Let me tell you something, man. When I was a little kid, my mom would whoop the shit out of me, and I asked her, "Mommy, do you love me?" And she said, "Fuck no, I don't love you." <laughs> and, and and people tell me all the time they like Tommy. You got to play the game to get your dick sucked, and I'm like, "Fuck getting my dick sucked." Fuck getting, fuck getting head. Fuck, get, fuck sex. Fuck a hand job every once in a while. I'm a big cat. I cut a hole in a motherfucking watermelon. That's all I need, motherfucker. Yeah. I'll drill yeah. a cantaloupe. I'll bust a nut up in a cantaloupe that I just pulled out the microwave and put <laughs> through the hole in, motherfucker. Why would you want to ruin a How cantaloupe? How about I want the rest of the world to believe I'm handsome. And I don't give a fuck what woman doesn't want to fuck me. She should fuck me or either she is handsome phobic. She is trans handsome phobic. If she won't give me head, she is trans handsome phobic. If she won't let me come in her house or her mouth, she is trans handsome phobic. Yeah. Yeah. What, what? the fuck are you trans talking about? Trans handsome phobic. I mean, this argument is terrible. Um, it's really hideous. Um, that's pretty much all you could say, I guess. I mean, I don't know what to even say to that. It doesn't even make sense within the context of its own bullshit. It's just like a real head scratcher. I think, I think I figured out why he has a, a big audience now, though. Mm -hmm. They like, I just, I know that there's just certain people out there on the internet that if someone's angry on camera, they're like, "Yeah, I like when people are angry." Subscribe. I like angry people because they're pissed off, and so am I. Yeah, pissed off because they're not getting laid. Uh, that's a shame. That's just because bitches be trans handsome phobic. Yep, yep. In a fucking, in a fucking genuinely good world, in a genuinely good world, women would be lining up around the block to to suck my cheesy dick. Well, I'm sitting right here in my fucking uh, garage that I have painted up to look like a city skyline at the evening time. They'd be sucking my dick right now, but no, they want me to like fucking be interested in them and shit. Fuck that. Do, 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 do. Apparently, I locked my girlfriend out of the house again. Good job. Uh, she, it's okay. She crawled in through a window. It's all good. <laughs> She's fine. Anyway, I think we could finally move on from this fuck. All right. I can't take it anymore. Here's uh, the reality behind Syria and Paris. What is seen and what is not seen. Mm-hmm.
All right, I'll turn down this fucking music. All right. Dear champion here to speak with you again oh, about geez. liberty. Who? Today I'd like to speak to you about Paris and Syria. And I'd like yeah, to Yeah, man, you know this motherfucker's awesome because he's got the guy Fox mask and he's got the anarchy symbol. He's got neck tattoos. Yeah, he's got neck tattoos and he's bald and he's fucking awesome, man. He's going to have some really deep, insightful things to say, man. The dialogue by discussing false flag operations. Never mind. <laughs> there are two kinds of false flag operations. We need to distinguish them whenever we're talking about them. One is where it is a mock event. There are no victims. There are no real perpetrators. The responders know it's a mock situation. And I mean, I love the fact that these morons with this false flag operation shit honestly think that the, there's like these huge national events that are totally staged. And all of the people involved in staging it are just zip, tight lips, never say anything, never confess their involvement, never tell anyone else, never, you know, write a book like how I staged the Columbine Massacre, how we bought off an entire school full of people. You know, I mean, like... It, it... <sighs> it's all contrived for whatever the goal happens to be. Many people believe there's been a number of those type of false flag operations here in the U.S. The second kind of false flag operation is entirely different. There, is, there are real acts of violence. There are real perpetrators of violence. The victims are truly injured or killed. However, in a situation where that is a false flag, the, it, the people who put that game into motion are intending you, the public, to blame somebody else not the people who actually put the ball. Yeah, man. What, you think ISIS did that shit in Paris? <laughs> there ain't even no fucking ISIS, man. They shoot all that ISIS shit on a fucking sound <laughs> stage in Arizona, man. There ain't no fucking ISIS. I went over there. You know, I've known some people went over to fucking uh, Syria and Iraq, looked everywhere for ISIS, couldn't even find it, man. There ain't no man. fucking ISIS. That shit don't exist. You've been man, lied you know to. You know what ISIS stands for, man? I-S-I-S, -I -S, right? Is some imaginary shit. Yeah. <laughs> all in play, all right? Now, how can we tell that's one of the tip-offs when something is a false flag operation? Well, of the If any event happens, it's a false flag operation. That's how you know. Second nature, you want to look for things like a significant financial transaction or transactions in the days or weeks beforehand that we've learned. Yeah, uh, well, there's kind of huge, there's like big financial transactions every fucking day. What are you talking about? You want to look for big financial transactions the day before, the days and weeks before the attack. It's like, well, there's always big financial transactions. And yeah, there's always going to be some people that are investing in something that might uh, go up because of, um, you know, a terror attack. Or, will, or because of what was destroyed or something like that. It's what we call a fucking coincidence, all right? Coincidence. Profits for certain persons or insulate them from the anticipated loss or economic hardship. Mm. Secondly, you want to look for things like evidence at the scene concerning the perpetrators that cannot reasonably or rationally be explained. Another telltale sign are the circumstances that make more sense or better fit a larger reality when considered in terms of who profits. And in a case like this, who profits or what the profit is is more along the lines of obtaining a desired political outcome. So, was Paris a false flag? Yes, yep. I believe it has to be. Let me describe it. It has to be. Has to it be fucking flag. has to be, all right? Anyone who even thinks that's real is fucking retarded, all right? Because it has to be a false flag. Well, let's find out why it has to <clears> be. Some of the events that led up to the Paris attack. Okay. Russia brought its air force into Syria, and in about 12 days, it accomplished by bombing ISIS what the United States government seemingly could not accomplish in 12 months. And of course, that's nonsense. It started to degrade the credibility of the United States significantly, even in this country where many Americans don't want to believe their government is lying to them. When, in fact, what happened was the United States was never bombing ISIS in Syria. It was using that as a pretext, <laughs> because it had congressional approval to do that, to actually bomb Assad's positions. 
But when Putin came in, it destroyed the credibility, and Americans began to say, wait a second, perhaps the United States government is indeed lying to us about what it's doing over in Syria. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Does anybody else get the feeling that this guy is uh, pulling all of this out of his no doubt tattoo encrusted ass? No, man. This sounds totes legit, Paul. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Totes. Totes. Totes, like, malotes, I'm sure, I'm man. Sure all, of the, all of the authorities on international <laughs> terrorism and, and anti-terrorism tactics and stuff, they're like, man, we, we're really having trouble with this ISIS shit. Who are we going to call uh, shit? Who's you, that, the, you guys remember that Mr. Clean looking douchebag with the neck tats and the really annoying grating voice and the smug face that you just want to see somebody punch? Let's call him. Hey man, all the, the all those uh, fucking people that you're talking about, you know, the experts on foreign policy and people who know about ISIS and what its operations are and stuff, those are all what we call puppets. All right, they're puppets of the government. They say what they're told to say. They're reading from a script that was probably dictated by Obama sitting yep. there in the White House telling them what to say. Probably invented ISIS. He only invented it because he's like a big Archer fan anyway. Man, none of these lighters work. not tolerate that. It needed to reinvigorate the U.S. narrative that ISIS is a threat to the world, which is critical for the United States Middle East ambitions. So, the Paris attack, taken at face value. Okay, nothing is critical to the fucking US in the Middle East. Like, we're just, the government's gonna do what it wants to do, regardless of what anyone else wants or says. Like, they don't even need justification. They'll just, they'll just do it and be like, our justification is we're doing it, bitch. We got the world's biggest military, we're gonna fucking use it. That's all the justification they need. They don't even need the people on board, you know, like, yeah, we, we agree. And even after this attack, it's not like, like, most of the politicians are still not even pushing to fucking send ground troops to that region. Most of the talk has been, like, let's, let's, get, let's just have it be a proxy war. Let's have, like, Saudi Arabia or someone fight them for us, you know? That's been the main gist of what people have suggested accomplished exactly that, where credibility for the United States claiming ISIS is this evil enemy was starting to drop away by Paris. Wow, suddenly ISIS is once again the, the biggest terror uh, enemy in all the world. When the credibility was waning, suddenly there was an attack in Paris. Now, I already showed in my television show that the oh. events concerning the Charles... Oh my God. I just, like, I... I look... I try and be respectful. No, no, I don't. Never mind. I was going to say I try and be respectful of other people's opinions, but I really don't. I, I uh, do try, but man, it's hard when you hear shit like this. I mean, I what do, are you supposed I to do? do? Paul, let it loose. I do. If a person reaches a minimum standard of credibility and reasonability, I try and hear a person out. But when a fathead fucking retard like this guy just bloviates for hours and hours making baseless assumption after baseless assumption claims without evidence over and over and over again i just like what is the, who's watching this fucking guy i don't know we're not even, i don't even know if he's popular or he not. said that he had a tv show didn't he oh god no that's sick i mean like, there's no like he's not presenting evidence for any of these crazy claims at all he's just like come on we all know we all know we all know what's really going on. It took on. place a while back in Paris. Were absolute bunk. And the way I proved that was this. All right, There's a piece it. of video where a alleged terrorist is running by a an alleged Paris police officer laying on the ground and fires an AK allegedly right into the officer's head. And in was it allegedly though? Are you sure this is just alleged? Okay. In fact. The French police claimed he was killed by a shot to the head by the AK held by the terrorists. Allegedly. And that's absolute bunk. Okay. Because the shot was fired from about two and a half feet away. And if you fire an AK round, 7.62 by 39, uh. into the melon of a guy from two and a half feet away, he's not just going to flinch, his head is going to explode. That's called external ballistics of that particular round. It was absolute theater. He was not shot with a 7.62 by 39 out of an AK-47. And therefore, it was very clear that there was some false flag operation taking place. Okay, so because according to your not an expert at all opinion, 
an AK-47 round would have done more damage based on what you see on the tape, which you probably can't even see the full extent of whatever damage was done anyway. But based on your not an expert knowledge of what would happen if you shot someone in the head at that range at who knows what fucking angle, based on that alone being fishy, the whole thing is a false flag. I found one thing that I think is an inconsistency, so the whole thing's fucking bunk. <coughs> one detail didn't add up. The whole story's a fucking fiction. Well, I hate to break it to you, but... There's always going to be details that don't add up in these stories. And by the way, I'm not convinced by your fucking analysis of the situation, individual. <laughs> <laughs> Who is behind it exactly? What were the parameters? I don't know. But when you tell me that a man's head did not explode by taking an AK round from two and a half feet, that's theater. Now, I mean, honestly, you guys have seen Predator, right? You guys have seen The Running Man. When you take a fucking 772 round to the dome, your fucking head just evaporates, man. What happened to the fucking 80s? We used to know that in the 80s. Now, everybody sees a terrorist putting a round in a cop's head on some grainy fucking uh, bystander uh, video, and, 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 it, and it doesn't it produce a gout and a shower of fucking blood and gristle. So obviously it's a false flag, you know. You know, I was playing Fallout 4 the other night. I shot someone in the head. That shit just exploded, man. I'm watching this guy's head. It, it don't explode at all. He just flinches a little. That's bullshit. That's theater. That's a pageant, man. That's pageantry. That's a fucking show, bitch. Anarchy. False flag. The U.S. was failing in Syria, militarily. Despite having fooled most of the American people concerning what it was doing, it was nevertheless failing. Now, the refugee plan... Bullshit, 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 total fucking bullshit. Hey, there's nothing to say. It's, it, it's just, it's, he's, he's just lying. He's just a fucking liar. Yeah, there's nothing to fucking, there's nothing to say, there's nothing to refute. He's just fucking straight up lying piece of shit. All right, uh, next one is Bernie Sanders' platform versus National Socialists in the 1920s. I've watched a little bit of this earlier. Just be warned, it's one of those guys that takes forever to get to whatever point he's trying Should to Should I make. just skip to, like, the middle of it, or... Well, let's just see how it goes. Okay. You can't even see him, because we're covering him. Like Capitalism news. tools. Uh, check us out at xcannabis.com and at clovisstore.com. Yeah. Uh, this is another project I'm working on, uh, CapitalismTools.com. Um, he I've believes in capitalism, and he is a tool. Just barely now building it. Uh, I do get some mentorship here. We we have some local meetings, uh, inspiring people to you know how to invest in Bitcoin or how to <laughs> produce services they can sell for Bitcoin or acquire Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin. through mining or other ways. Um, and I've kind of been promoting this since 2011. Um, but I demonstrated it first with xcannabis.com back before there was Bitcoin, back before there was cryptocurrencies. I kind of had my own cryptocurrency on. So you click on a video. It says Bernie Sanders platform versus national socialism, socialists in the 1920s. You click the video. It opens up. There's some other fucker. Hey, you're talking about Bitcoin. Rambling about Bitcoins and... Um, cannabis bits, cannabits. I mean, what? Yeah, well, we're all about the cannabis. Cannabits. Mm. Xcannabis.com called. Yeah. Cannabits. Cannabits. That That's a clever name, isn't it? You just go to xcannabis.com and do a search. I thought of that myself. For Ooh, cannabis. Yeah, cannabis. Learn more about it. Learn more. Anyway, uh, why would I so go I to? Why would I go to xcannabis.com and sir, I came here looking to see Bernie Sanders platform compared with National Socialists in the 1920s. What the fuck makes you think that I'm going to go to xcannabis.com? <laughs> Search for cannabis. It sounds like something like they'd sell at Tim Hortons in the Netherlands or something like that. New there's cannabis. Gotta be, there's got to be money in this. THC there's gotta be cream money. in the so donuts. So many people are trying to do this YouTube thing. There's got to be money for somebody like maybe of your stature, TJ, to step in and just go, no, 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 stop what you're doing. If you want people to watch and listen to what you're doing, just fucking stop. Like, don't name a video one thing and then go on for 20 minutes about cannabis. Nobody cares. <laughs> 
that's that's what the show is for. So right now we can say it to them, like well, fuck yeah, you, but man. They, but they're not paying us. Oh, true. Yeah, man. Skip this shit. All right. You want to make a video about this? Title it. Um, Bitcoins and cannabis, or something. You know, yeah. that's a that's a good title for this part of the video. You want to make a video about Bernie Sanders' platform versus the National Socialists in the 1920s? Here's how the video should start. Should start. <laughs> Here's how the video should start. It should be like Bernie Sanders' platform is much like the National Socialists of the 1920s, and here's why. That's how you start that fucking video. Just FY fucking I, bitch. To, to give more information, someone um, from my last video, uh, a family member, came and kind of interrupted the flow uh, of the conversation. There was oh, some people, I love when good, people fuck uh, you, Uncle things in their videos that clearly nobody that's watching this video is ever going to know what they're talking about. Uh, in the video that I made, I believe it was Tuesday of last month. Uh, the to first the Tuesday, or was it the second Tuesday of last month? I where I was talking with insert random youtuber nobody's ever heard of in a hangout by myself with him and uh, we were discussing can who fucking cares <laughs> and i had a family member come in there and kind of ruin it you know my uncle jeff came in here and he tried to molest me again like he did when i was a kid but i'm a lot older now so i put that motherfucker in a headlock and broke a beer bottle over his head and i don't think he's gonna be coming around here anymore but anyway back to the point of this video cannabis, cannabis you know Watch, Fucking and awesome. So I did close off comments there, um, just because it was getting negative. It was you know, getting into comments <laughs> about getting my negative. negative. Yeah, very inappropriate People were comments. People being mean. So if you want to Fuck up, your can of bits, faggot! You're a fucking faggot! Shove your can of bits up your fucking ass, faggot! Ha! What? People were really getting, like, pissed. Maybe he titled that deceptively, too, you know? Up with me. You know what happened with that? You can go to this uh, URL. Nope. He has this. Nobody's he has this go. post. Nope. He has this post like, "Guys, my mom died last night." You're like, "Oh my god!" They click on it. Cannabis, yo! <laughs> you gotta get some cannabis. Uh, oh, yeah, right I was gonna get into the meat of this video, but first, let me tell you about some inconsequential minor drama that's going on between me and this other dude that nobody knows. <laughs> I'm, we're gonna get invested in this. Who knows, know. Paul? Maybe this is like, maybe this is some really deep shit. And the further you dig down the rabbit hole, the more interesting. I am. that's not um, gonna be the I'll case. I'll post this link in the description of the YouTube video. Yeah. So you're welcome to check Ooh, that out. This check is just it a little out. Facebook link. Um, Everyone's so anyway, interested in that. On, I just yeah. How about to, moving on? Um, that's a good idea. Describe a little bit more about socialism and about. Kind of uh, going further on what uh, I was talking about here, why socialism yeah. is dangerous. Bernie Sanders versus National Socialism. Uh, someone made a good point saying that I used Wikipedia as a source for the platform of the National Socialist German Workers' Party. So I'm Wikipedia, sure Bernie Sanders isn't going to put Jews in concentration camps. I heard he might even be Jewish himself. I don't know. The rumors... I'm pretty sure he's an atheist. Well, I mean, like, culturally or whatever. Well, yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, Paul, uh, National Socialist. I mean, they. Oh, uh, Jim, Jimmy Kimmel asked Bernie Sanders his religion, and he basically gave the answer that, like, I believe in people and all this shit. I'm like, okay, so you're a secular humanist, basically. It seems like that's what he is to me. Program 1920, Wiki. Um, I'll just demonstrate it. Why did you already you know, right have now, this shit pulled up? Before, but I, I had invested. You know, I apologize to the vigilant Christian. Yeah, this guy sucks. Cause, uh, man, this guy does kind of what you do, but worse. Let's just move on to the vigilant Christian. That video that we had. Oh yeah, him. you you want to watch the vigilant Christian cry, Paul? Yes. Yeah. One thing. One thing I want to mention before we do that is we got a message from Mario. Uh, this morning, he had initially agreed to talk to Evan Lefevre, but we, we got a message from him today basically saying that because Evan Lefevre is a character, uh, just like Creation is Cat, he wants to get away from talking to people who aren't characters. But also, uh -huh. uh, also he wants to get away from talking to Paul, too. So he, he's, <laughs> he's very course, selective. Evan Lefevre, is, Evan Lefevre is not a character. He's just crazy. You know, you know what I have to say to that in response to that in response to Mario there. I have say to it. say this. I'm cooking up a beat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
cooking up a beat. Oh, that's cook, cook. Cooking up a beat, motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck you, Mario, you pussy bitch. Here's Mario's baptism. Yeah, I say take, like take, take I say Jean Mario Baptiste. can't Mario can't come back on the show unless Evan Lefavor and Paul are both here. Oh wow. Yeah, take your take your Jean awesome. Bap, take your Jean Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg hairdo and fucking keep it on your own fucking channel, you pussy. <laughs> All right. Wow, I love it. Here here's his baptism. Uh, I'm just going to play it and say whatever the fuck you want to say. You might have to turn it up. Yeah, I love how he's getting baptized in a fucking swimming pool, you know? There's a fun noodle later on in the video. Yeah, there's about here, but I was actually baptized on my birthday, which was Easter. It was interesting. No, it's not. The other day, they were Ben was asking me about shirt guy, and he's like, "Why you always have it in for shirt guy?" Part of me thinks you'd like like to have him like chained up in your basement and like whip him and stuff. And I was like, "Well, you know." <laughs> oh my god! Unfortunately, it's really hard to hear what he's saying, but he's gonna start crying like a yeah, bitch. yeah. That's the good part. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Here so much. Uh, I was just like everyone else has a rebellious team. Um, you know, just the according to the world and the things of this world. And, uh, I just want, I just question everything. I do something uh, that's out of the norm. I do there's something wrong with the world. I, who normally does a speech before their baptism? Is Is that normal? Because. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember ever. I mean, I don't watch a lot of baptisms, I guess. But I've never seen someone give a big emotional speech before getting baptized. Usually, people are baptized as, as children. But and am I, the, am I the only one that just keeps expecting the uh, weird gay porn bear in the background to just start <laughs> fucking Mario's mouth any second? Yeah, you know, once Mario's head's underwater, that's when he's going to use his opportunity. He's going to plug Mario's nose up. And then when he opens it up in a vain attempt to get some air, that's when he's going to shove the cock in. <laughs> I started asking some really, really deep questions when I was about 17 and um, didn't want to turn to Christ for any of those answers, so I got involved with Buddhism and New Age and all sorts of Eastern uh, philosophies and stuff. And, uh, got into being an astrologer, a tarot card reader, uh, leading people to an occult awakening and being used by the enemy to uh, uh, do those things. And, uh, and I was with Christine, and uh, God spoke to us and showed us uh, through YouTube, ironically enough, that uh, <laughs> He was the truth, and that um, He's what I was searching for. <laughs> oh, God. Here, it Here we go. Here we go. Cue <laughs> the get fucked Mario clip. Yeah. <laughs> That's this is Paul's reaction when he found out about microwavable burritos. Yeah, I was like, I used to. Um, oh fuck, I don't know if I can do this. I used to when I was a kid. I used to have to make the burritos by hand. And then one day I was in the frozen food section and I saw a package of El Monterey freezer burritos and they were already made. <laughs> Oh, it's so already funny. made. I didn't even have to fucking do it. I just pop them in and in like a minute and a half, I've got a burrito. Dunk me. You know this guy is just like, okay, shut up so I can dunk your head under the water. Yeah. If you get any more annoying, I'm just going to hold you down there. <laughs> years later, um, he's blessed me in awesome ways, and uh, he's allowed me to be a voice online, and I get to... The bear is getting restless, like, am I gonna get to fuck this guy's face or what? Preach is possible to. No one told me he was so mouthy and in all the wrong ways. All I want to do is serve him, man. And this week, a lot of people 
turns more into a teenage girl by the second i know seriously it's, it's amazing one it, it, did, did you not get tickets to the 1d concert that's coming through <laughs> town you little bitch <laughs> <laughs> and i'm doing this today because i love you dad i don't want the world to know that um, you're the answer Too much echo, and you can't actually hear what he's saying. Uh, you can, I can yeah. kind of, I can hear like, I don't know. I feel like I can hear seventy percent of what he's saying. Yeah, uh, I, I just don't know who gets to give a, a ten minute speech. These aren't even, you know? these aren't even holy men next to him. He just got some dudes off the street to be yeah, in this video. Yeah, I was video. just dunked, and that was it. Yeah, I mean, like he, this is like he shot this at the local YMCA. He put out a Craigslist ad for these guys. Right. These dudes thought they were going to get to be part of an orgy, but he's like, okay, my fetish is, you know, you got to baptize me first. And they're like, all right, I guess we'll baptize you before we fuck your little faggot ass. And well, then, you know, uh -huh. whether he actually went through with the, the orgy afterwards, I'll leave up to the viewers' imaginations. But the answer is yes. I've got a French vanilla situation going on. Oh. Right. Okay. We're, we're gonna miss you, oh shirt God, guy. Oh God! Look, dude, Brutus is moving into position. Oh yeah. A little closer. Oh, there's a chick in it. Boo! Oh. Boo! There's a fun noodle in the background. That is the fun noodle of the Lord. <laughs> God hath blessed that fun noodle. <laughs> You see the cameraman struggling to stay awake, like, oh shit, oh shit. Yeah. The to be able to go out into this world that's there and, and share the gospel with other people. Lord, you know, just this is one of those things about about Christianity. They always have to one up each other. So, so Mario just spent the last fifteen minutes sniveling and crying about how Jesus saved his life, and now fucking Grandpa's got to step in and go, "Let me show you how it's really done, son," and quote some scripture to you before I dunk you in this pool with a noodle in it. <laughs> yeah. fuck, like, what an absurd fucking ritual this is. Like, I mean, like, just, it's, if you're gonna do this, like, shouldn't you go all out and get some like robes and go out to like a river? or like a lake or something you know make it look fucking classical and shit like yeah I'm like connecting to some ancient shit here you know instead like no we're just gonna do it at, at a the pool line. at a holiday inn with some scared kids swimming on the other end being like what the fuck is going mommy, on mommy why is that man crying yeah. More mommy, like, why is that little girl crying about <laughs> God and why is that gay man working his way behind her it's yeah. probably just some kind of weird porno honey just look the other way <laughs> This is Canada. We have to be polite, eh? Does he cry again? Has he, has he ever stopped? Somebody what? in the chat just gave me the best idea. If I ever walked in on this, I would so run in and just fucking cannonball right on top of them. <laughs> It'd be amazing, dude. You gotta scream Hail Satan just as yeah. you're going in, too. <laughs> or just look you know what else you do you just walk uh look at him be like at, at, right after he gets dunked and he's like i feel the power of the holy spirit you can look at him be, and just you know deadpan like i pissed in that water you know yep just to let you i know. like how the the bald guy in the back is like lathering up mario's back mm, like yeah, yeah. Wax just, on, just, wax off, wax you let, off. <laughs> let all the tension out. It'll go in easier. Just let it out. Just relax. Just gotta relax, Mario. Feel the cold water up against your butthole. Yeah. So I got my hands in it, and I put it in around front. <laughs> <laughs> I always like when Ben plays the Ben O'Reilly clips. That's funny. Ben O'Reilly, you say? Wow. 
I would start to massage your boob. <laughs> hey. yeah, you'd feel the tension draining out of you. Anal sex, oral sex, anal sex, oral sex, oral sex, oral sex, oral sex. <laughs> anal sex, oral sex. <laughs> Oral sex, oral sex parties. I rubbed her thigh while mentoring her. <laughs> <laughs> I rubbed her thigh while mentoring her. Yeah. I was a mentor. Yeah. Or Ben Cena, I should say. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna fuck your ass, and then you're gonna be humble. Got a point. Huh. Blah 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 blah. For the generation that's turned from you, God be praised, will see many many souls come. And the Lord said unto the Israelites, "Blibbity blim blam." Do you want to move on? I think we're past the. I want to see them dunk him. Okay. I'm hoping they hold him down. Until he starts to struggle and then they let him up. All right, dunk his ass. Dunk his ass. Dunk his ass. Dunk his ass. Dunk him. Fucking waterboard that piece of shit. Do it. Yeah, yeah. All right. No, you should have held him down in there. Yeah. Come on. Come on, you had a chance to kill him. You saw that terrible display. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, let's just keep this guy underwater. Dunk this water-headed idiot a few more times. Yeah, it's like you're not bubble. stop. We're supposed you're supposed to uh you're supposed to be baptized by the water, not by your own fucking tears. <laughs> Woo! It's fun to stay at the Y. All right, are we done now? Yes. Can we move on? We're done. Man. All right. I have to go uh, handle a French vanilla situation. I will be right back. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So while Paul's gone, I think we'll take this opportunity to ask everyone to give this video a thumbs up. Thumbs up. The fans oh. asked for us to have Paul on Wednesday since we're not doing a show this Friday. We delivered. We did that shit. If you appreciate for that, you. give this video a thumbs up. For if you're you. not subscribed, please subscribe. Please, please, please subscribe. Please subscribe. <laughs> Uh, Please subscribe to my channel. I just want to have subscribers. <laughs> I just want to have a YouTube subscriber. The French vanilla situation. Well, as soon as TJ is done crying, I want to thank you guys for putting up with my awkwardness. Oh, that's all right. No problem. We love you, shirt guy. Well, I love, love you guys so too. Much. In a strictly platonic kind of way. No, no, not no. not as far as TJ is concerned. I don't think so, shirt sure, guy. He's gonna pummel he the fuck out of you. He can think whatever he wants. That's, I'm gonna fuck your okay. ass and make you humble, <laughs> shirt guy. Well, unless you I'll got like a three hundred mile I'll fuck your daughter and I'll fuck your son. Yeah, shirt sure, guy. You ain't gonna be wearing <laughs> a shirt when I get to you. Oh my god, that's for sure. All the right. First thing to go. Here's a um, here's a segment we haven't done in a while. White guilt. White guilt. It's white guilt. It's beautiful. All right. Uh, this is a video that came out back on Veterans Day. But it's so bad. We decided to play it even though yeah. it's outdated. Aquaria. So I'm in my office, and I posted this post about guy. Veterans Day, and it goes as such. Same gender loving. I see no difference. Happy Veterans Day. After. Same gender loving. Gay, <laughs> that's something for, that was made up by the white man. Yeah, to listen. To oppressalize me. Listen Don't to you Ruby understand? Rod. Ruby Rod knows. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't. <laughs> Corbin Dallas. Corbin Dallas. <laughs> yeah, he does sound a lot like Chris Rock, doesn't he? 
It's not Chris Rock. It's Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. Stupid fucking piece of shit. I apologize. I'm he wants to drunk. abuse you. You're not drunk. Yeah. You don't. I you am. can't even. You can't even afford liquor. You spend all your money on shirts. <laughs> well, you I'm haven't come up with a new shirt for a while, so. Yeah, those Sorry. will be coming out soon. We should come out with a shirt guy shirt. I probably Ever wouldn't buy it. We're we're making it, and you right. you don't get a share even. You get a dollar. Invaded us, the Af and a half-eaten Snickers. Africans have rebelled against Just this European the Snickers. I don't colonial care about system. The they used to call us runaways, then terrorists, and now they call us thugs and hooligans because we are fighting. We're the hooligans. I wouldn't call this guy a thug or a hooligan. Yeah, no one's looking at your ass being like, thug, hooligan. Yeah, I, I... The, the word that probably is most commonly associated with you is probably fag. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Well, you know, it is what it is. We live in a prejudiced world. ...to be free of a system that sucks our blood. The veterans of African people are not those who serve to protect and advance white imperialism. Our true veterans are those who fight against this parasite that lives off of the oppression of Africans and other colonized people around the world. America... Kill the white people. Oh. Spelled with three Ks. Vet America spelled with three Ks. America. Veterans do not fight for freedom. They fight to destroy the freedom of others, to steal their resources for the ruling class. They are the real terrorists, thugs and hooligans. Our veterans fight against all odds for freedom, power, and decolonization for Africa and Africans all around the world. And we He says this in a building that was built on land stolen from the Native Americans, the Indians, you know? Why, if, if he's, like, so against this colonization, why does he, you know, live in this structure as part of this system? Like, shouldn't he go to fucking Rwanda or some shit and be like, yeah, finally, I'm home. It's like, we kill you for you homosexual. You eat the poo-poo. You die. <laughs> you eat the poo-poo. Yeah. They lick another man's anus and then they eat the poo poo like soft <laughs> of ice cream. Yeah, why don't you, you eat the poo poo? Since, you know, since the white race is so fucking evil, why don't you go back to Africa where your same gender loving ass would be fucking, uh, they'd shove a machete up your ass and then fucking shove some hot coals down your throat. Why don't you go to f go fucking Africa then? Have a good time there. See how fucking accepting and loving those people are to your same gender loving ass. We are winning. Is where let to eat Africa. Africa is our land. So a lot of people came at me very upset. Some people whose husbands were in the military, some people who are in the military, just a lot of African people who are in the U.S. military. And when I say Africans, I mean all black people because we are African. There, that vote black. No, uh, there are some uh, the, the, there are some people you call Africans that have never been to Africa and have no interest of ever going there or anything related there yeah there's plenty of black people from con from countries that are not african countries well, like their ancestors were from africa but... our ancestors are from fucking africa R right <laughs> yeah if you go yeah, far we're back all enough. africans yeah yeah so fuck you i did not change your prime identifier African. So, um, I'm sorry if your feelings are hurt, but nobody has yet given me a political stance or sum up that opposes what I wrote. You are just telling me that your feelings are hurt. The truth is going to hurt your feelings. We live in... Yeah, the truth can hurt people's feelings, but you know what else can hurt people's feelings? Total fucking lies and bullshit. Just because something hurts someone's feelings doesn't mean it's the fucking truth. You know, they say the truth hurts, and this shit I'm saying hurts, so it must be the truth. No. That's stupid. You're a moron. Colonialism. We are colonized, living in colonialism. We are going to have contradictions. I have my own contradictions and have had them in the past. But when they are called out, I separate myself from them, and I attack <laughs> them. No. Wrong. Lie as vigorously and as strongly as I attack imperialism, white power, and white nationalism because it is part of that. The only reason you or your family member was a soldier is because you were raised in an education system that
He does have really good teeth, though. He does. Very nice. I, Very nice I wish, job. I wish I had teeth as good as he does. That pushes white nationalism. America's number one. USA. USA. The land of the free. Home of I do agree with him on that point. That shit is so played out and redundant and shit. Especially, I, I, I love, I love though that he's giving like, like his answer to that, which like I agree too. All that is bullshit. All the jingoism and the American, yeah. you know, exceptionalism shit is bullshit. But, but his answer to that is to wave what the flag of Nigeria, the flag of the Ivory Coast, where a person like you would be like, like TJ said earlier, fucking have hot coals poured down your throat. I mean, like, what's what's the fucking answer? So you're pointing out the problem, but the answer that you're giving seems worse than the fucking problem that you're pointing out. Those African countries are only like that because America. America fucked them up somehow. The brave, they fight for freedom. The soldiers fight for freedom. The soldiers do not fight for freedom. The soldiers fight for parasitic capitalism. <sighs> we fight for dollars to give to the ruling class. They go over to indigenous lands, bomb and terrorize them, and then implant their own government system to make sure that the white ruling class in America can take advantage and ownership of the resources in these indigenous lands. And it has nothing to do with them being white. You know, you're right about people who are these elitists secretly not not even really secretly just pretty much openly uh profit doing war profiteering something that used to be considered not only illegal but like just insanely unethical but now it's just done right in the open like yeah you know it costs you know lockheed martin they need you know trillions of dollars and shit just keep giving them money but it's not because they're white it's just because they're fucking rich and greedy it, there's no war but the fucking class war, motherfucker. Yeah. You know, it's and, not it's not white, white people that control this shit. Like, Paul's ego and me and Ben, we don't get a fucking check <clears throat> in the mail every month. Like, here's your white people check from all our various exploitation schemes from around the world. You're white, so of course you get a cut of that action. It doesn't it, happen. It, it, and it's, and it's that they, the people that are doing this shit to all of us, this guy, us included... Um, they use that fucking false dichotomy, that black versus white or white versus black or whatever fucking they street use that versus gay divide and conquer. Yep. I mean, it's simple and I know it's fucking trite to say it, but this guy's a perfect example of that. Here is a guy that has been so convinced by race baiters on either side of the fucking aisle that fucking white people are all the devil and they're, and, and, and they are the reason why he's broke and oppressed. I have nothing to do with your broke oppression, sir. I have nothing to do with it. I've been broke and oppressed my whole fucking life. Maybe not as oppressed as you. My yeah, skin, you don't. You my, can't beat him in the oppression Olympics, Paul. Don't even try. I mean, I lived in a fucking camper shell for two years in a in a friend's backyard. It was a so, mansion on the inside. It was like the TARDIS. You go inside, yeah. it's way bigger than yeah, it looks. Yeah. These white people pretend to be poor, but really all of the interiors of their houses are these cavernous mansions with black butlers and slavery still legal in there and shit. It's then just, whatever these people... It's just kind of sad because this guy has been convinced. He's been convinced that, like, under normal circumstances, he and I would agree on this. The shit that he's preaching about corporations and, and, and our military being an arm of predatory capitalism, I believe all that. That's all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just this fucking back to Africa movement bullshit that you're talking about. It has nothing to do with the price of rice in China. If you talked about the substantive issues, you'd have white people like me agreeing with you. Rather I don't than care. My I don't you. need no white man to validate my opinion come together and try to fight back, we call them terrorists. This is the truth. You are not fighting for freedom. You are not fighting to defend us. You are fighting for colonialism. And I am sorry about it. But at the same time, I can say as an African, yes, I still love you, but you have gone down the wrong way. There is no bigger contradiction an African can do than to become an arm of the state, to become either a pig or become a U.S. soldier, unless you are going there to learn some techniques to bring back over here to the revolution. But all you are doing is pushing white imperialism, okay? Look at America's track record. 
They went to Iraq and had war with Iraq because they lost control of the powers that they put in Iraq. They fought against the Taliban because they lost control of the Taliban that they trained and gave weapons to. Now they're fighting against ISIS, who they have trained and gave weapons to, that they employed, that they gave weapons to and trained. So all of this, like look at America, even Panama, when the war happened with Panama, how America implanted their own government and the president of Panama that America instilled in Panama, making Panam Panamanians or whatever you call them think when they were voting. You know, yet more countries that if they had their way, you'd be dead. You'd be fucking dead. All of those countries you're talking about, man, every single one of them, your, your ass goes to Afghanistan, it's like, I'm same gender loving. They're like, oh, okay, well, you know, right this way to the bonfire. Yep. So, I mean, like, you know, fuck you. All right? Just seriously, you're a piece of shit. If you want to, you guys want to, you guys want to see uh, the flip side of this guy? Yeah. You want to see the other side? Yeah, let's take a look at his, 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 his uh, twin. <laughs> his, his fucking twin. His opposite. No. Bizarro, Dougie Not, Doug. Not oh, his opposite. Is. His basically the up? white equivalent. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Gonnet. Doug Gonnet. The audio um, in this video is so I got low. I've been turning it up in so queue loud. To upload uh, Starbuzz no review one tobacco. Cares. Uh, no one since gives it's a cold shit. outside. I've got no immune system. No one gives a shit. I uh, really don't feel like. Not my. I call it a fucking cigar. Fuck you. I know it's a cigarillo. No one gives a shit. But it's part of Drew, Drew Estate's line. I've been asked to comment on this whole uh, Paris massacre bullshit. Wading through the bullshit. <clears throat> there really isn't much to say, folks. There really is not much to there's say. There's not much to say, but this video is 17 minutes and 48 seconds long. Yeah, yeah there's really not much to say. For, I, I'd love somebody to make a video like this just once and then just turn the video off at that point. There's really not much to say, folks. Bye, I'm going to do I that guess. now. I'm just going to do a video on my channel. It's going to be like Bernie, you know, comparing Bernie Sanders socialism to 1920s national socialism. And then I'll just come on the camera and I'll be like, really not much to say. The end. Yeah. That's it. Subscribe. Say that's going to be any different than what I have said about moo slimes. Moo what? slimes? What? That's how he says Muslims, huh? Moo slimes. Wow. That's my derogatory oh. name for him. Moo slimes. It's, it's a Muslim yeah. pejorative. I thought he was talking about a Pokemon. No. <laughs> Shut up, Pales Ago. Moose slime, <laughs> I choose you! <laughs> Squirtle. Gonna be the very best. More racist than before. Um, I firmly believe that all of them need to just be fucking eradicated. Okay. I love how when I did that video about nuking the Middle East, a bunch of people came to me like, That's a straw man, cause no one actually says that! Here's, here's yet another example of someone who says that. Men, women, the kids, all of them. Just fucking yeah. kill them all. Kill them all. I, I would actually say this guy's uh, a lot worse than the last guy we played upon further reflection. I didn't see that guy calling for genocide. No. Now, now maybe he does want white genocide. I don't know. But this guy's outright like, yeah, just kill all the fucking moo slimes. Men, <laughs> women, the children, little babies. Yeah, I mean, I know that they haven't even been raised into the religion yet, and there's no fucking way that they're even radical at all, but kill them! Fucking kill them! <laughs> Moose Slime uses exploding turban attack. It's super effective. <laughs> Only way this world is ever going to be rid of that filth from that death squad, that death clan, that whole... They're from a... Yeah, they're a death clan... So we need to kill them all, huh? Okay. Totally consistent, totally logical. No contradictions there. Death cult persona of theirs. Death cult. So just fucking kill them all. Or. Or. There's an alternative. We don't have to kill them all. Give them a choice. Give them a choice. Denounce that fucking shit. Burn your fucking queer an. Queer <laughs> Ah! Oh, man. 
So true. Queer Anne. Queer Anne, oh, you know? It is, I, it's I like the Koran, but it's queer. It's kind of late, but I wanted to show, uh, while you were doing the Mario thing, this. I, my cousin bought me a uh, Pez Dispenser uh, Star Trek Next Generation set. Cool. It's number... 666 oh wait a minute 66,666 wow cool yeah, sure guy has said. all the luck man yeah sure guy know. has all the luck anyway back to this crazy racist and choose another religion anyone you want worship cats and dogs if you want but you will never ever 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 practice that fucking death cult again because if you do and you're caught, instant execution. Wow. So that that's the America you want to live in, where we get rid of religious freedom for one specific religion, and we execute anyone who dares to practice it. It's a death... I mean, I love it. It's like, they're a death cult. They're a fucking death cult. That's why we need to kill isn't, them all in the most merciless manner possible. Yeah, I would say Christianity is more of a fucking death cult, man. Their whole thing is, is centered around, like, Jesus was murdered for yo! For yo! Man, we went, to, when we were uh, in Europe, man, we saw that old Christian art, all those old paintings and shit. Most macabre. They look like fucking Marilyn Manson album it was, covers, It man. was, the, we saw the most of those in Amsterdam at the Rijksmuseum. Yeah, no wonder those people <clears throat> just want to fucking smoke weed now. Look how depressing <laughs> the past is for them. It's horrible. Dude, that's that's one of the reasons why I'm in favor of the NEA, the National Endowment of the Arts. Because back then art, it was bitch. just churches and rich people that made art. Fuck your art, bitch. Don't no one need that shit. All I need everybody, is a fucking iPhone. All I need is an Whether iPhone. Whether you're good at it or not. Draw a stick figure. Yeah. That's the way I feel. Draw Draw a dinor. Fuck. That's how I measure somebody's artistic prowess. Dinor. Or you could just do what TJ did and draw himself. Drawing himself. Oh, Damn. you're the one who made me do that shit? Fuck yeah. you. That well, was a frustrating was picture. See, since uh, Scotty's not here because he signed... I'm assuming he signed the back of it. Fuck you, shirt guy. I guess, because I, I don't remember doing it. Yeah. Well, if he, well, if he didn't, just in case, uh, fuck you, shirt guy. Thank you. Fuck Thank you, you shirt guy. Islam. Fuck Muhammad. Is Islam. Fuck the Muslims. Fuck any sympathizer out there who disagrees with my fucking opinion on this matter. And yeah. So weighty and authoritative, man. How dare you fucking have an opinion other than mine? Didn't you know I'm the smartest man on earth? And I don't even fucking consider it an opinion. This is the fucking truth. This is the cold, hard fucking truth. This is fucking life, folks. In my opinion, my opinion is not an opinion. It's a fact, bitch. Bitch. Anyone who fucking disagrees should be fucking killed, man. Yeah. You a sympathizer of those moo slimes with their islames. You need to fucking die. <laughs> islames. This shit happened over there. Hundreds of people are injured, critically injured. Over 130 people are fucking dead. So let's kill two point fucking whatever billion more. Or wait, it's like it's 1.7 billion, right? Is that the amount of Muslims? It's a huge number. It's more than a billion people. It's more than a billion. And it's the fastest growing religion. From what I understand. Yeah, man. That's because they have the more kids than the rest of us. Yeah. A few hundred people died because some Muslims killed them. So we need to kill all, all Muslims. All, unless they fucking renounce that shit and be like, fuck the queer Anne, yo. You're a fucking queer, Anne. And now all, and I, and I definitely want to direct this to all you fucking anti-gun fucking pussies out there. Look at what anti-gun did to those people. Because no one in America has been mass murdered. No oh. one in America has been mass 1. murdered. 1.6 billion. There you go. Fucking killed them. Had one, two, three of those civilians over there been armed? Had it been in a country like ours where we are free to care? It happens in our country all the time. And it's right-wing terrorists that do it. 
Well, it's not always. ...and possess firearms. Those fucking worthless moose slimes would have been fucking dead. A lot more lives would have been saved. They're, they already are dead. I mean, I guess, I mean, you know, it's possible that more lives could have been saved. I mean, I can't look into sure. a crystal ball and tell you for sure they wouldn't have, but how do you know? I mean, shit, if you want to look at crime statistics in an unrestrained gun ownership society, just look at the, the Old West. I mean, that was the most peaceful, tranquil time in American history, and everybody had a fucking gun. I don't understand what you guys' faggoty liberal fucking problem is. Yeah, yeah it was so safe. This tragedy was... I remember they were showing some... I was watching uh, some TV show where they were giving, like, a tour of, of like, Tombstone mm -hmm. and shit. And they were showing some bar, and they were, like, showing all the bullet holes in the walls and shit. <clears throat> That's yeah, crazy. You know, when you give a, when you give a, a good-hearted person a gun, not a Muslim, Pislam terrorist, but a good-hearted Christian <laughs> white person a gun, um, they automatically become so proficient with that weapon that they never make mistakes. So... If you think about it, if there were if, if people in, in France had been packing heat, they certainly wouldn't have like mistaken each other for the shooter and shot each other or caught other, um, you know, um, innocent people in the crossfire as they tried unsuccessfully to fire their fucking weapons clumsily at whoever they thought was shooting their weapons clumsily at whoever they thought was the fucking terror. You know, it, it, it certainly wouldn't have fucking didn't have the, the possibility of devolving into a total fucking bloodbath over there. All right. We're going to do story time with Paul. Fuck. Yeah. Let me turn this video down because it was way louder. All right, here we go. Yeah. Story time with Paul. So I, I've been thinking a lot about manliness lately. Uh, manliness has come up a lot in the in the discussions that I've been having with people. Somebody was asking me about like this whole alpha male, beta male thing. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's heard that, right? Yeah. yeah. Certainly that sort of thing does exist, right, in nature, the whole dominant male thing. But, like, I've known some fucking dangerous men in my life. I've known some quote-unquote alpha males. And you know what the one thing that they all have in common is? I've Fish never... Bags? Well, that too. But no, no, I've never once heard them brag about being alpha males. Exactly correct. Um, and, and, and I don't understand why this current crop of quote unquote alpha males feel the need to crow at the top of their lungs from the top of every rooftop. What fucking alphas they are. Small dick um, syndrome. Shut the fuck up. Sure. Just guy. Know an alpha when you saw one, that's a guy I don't want to fuck with. Um, now you've got to announce it on the internet to everybody what an alpha you are and what a beta everybody else is. Anyway, I digress. I wanted to talk about manliness because as you'll see in the spider video that's forthcoming from Beyond Fear, I, cr I cringe and whimper like a woman for about 15 minutes while she and her roommates uh, formulate a plan on how to get rid of the spider. Um, and I, I started thinking about some of the things that like people in my family have done, have gone through, and how disappointed they must be in me. Um, my uncle, for example, was in Vietnam. And he's a very nice person. He's not one of those like, you know, Charlie's hiding in the bushes type of guys. But when he tells stories about some of the shit that he saw in Vietnam, um, it's just like, holy, f like, how does a human being uh, hold up under that type of fucking thing day after day? Uh, you know, with the big spider, like he, he told me one time, he said, you know, PJ, uh, they have this snake in Vietnam called a two step because after it bites you, you take two steps and you're dead. And we lost, you know, a couple of guys to those. Anyway, this is not the funniest Paul's ego story. It's a story that comes to you secondhand from my uncle, who was a Vietnam vet. But I've always loved this story because it's so fucked up. It just shows you how fucked up war is, right? So my, my uncle is in the jungle in Vietnam on a, on a patrol uh, with him. You know, he, he and his platoon are patrolling the fucking just jungle in Vietnam. And they become aware that there's a squad of Viet Cong shadowing them. And um, they, they try unsuccessfully a few times to fire at them. And, you know, they never, they never really get a lock on them. But they know they're being followed. But the, the problem is they're out in the fucking middle of nowhere, right? And they've got to stop and, and rest. 
uh, at night because you can't be traipsing through the fucking jungle at night. So at night, um, they would set up a camp in a clearing, which may seem counterintuitive. You'd think you'd want to be amongst the trees, but when you're fighting Charlie, you know, the man in the black pajamas, the gooks, if you will forgive my anachronistic term, you can't trust them. To, 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 to just like be, you can't be, you can't be safe amongst the trees. You gotta, you gotta have open field. You gotta be able to see them coming. So they, they would set up in an open, uh, a clearing and they would set up claymore mines facing outward all the way around their encampment. And one dude would have the job of staying up all night with his finger on the, on the, on the trigger of the claymores. So if he's, if the enemy charged out from all directions from the trees, they're going to eat, you know, a face full of shrapnel and all of them are going to be dead. So my, my uncle pulled this duty one night and, um, he went through the whole night, said he was hearing things out in, in the darkness, went and woke up or, you know, called his chain of command or whatever he had to fucking, I don't know. I'm not a military guy. And was reporting, you know, hey, I see movement in the trees. I'm hearing uh, movement in the clearing. Please advise. And the guy was like, you know, ready the fucking claymores. So my uncle was basically for like six hours waiting for daylight, daylight with his thumb on this claymore button, right? Never happened. Nothing ever happens. He doesn't push the button. They're packing up. And of course, because my uncle was manning the button, he has to go and, and help wrap up the claymores. And um, like I said, not a funny story, but here's the punchline. When they went to go get the claymores, somebody had snuck in to the camp and turned all of the claymores around so that they were facing inward at all of the American soldiers who were camping there. So if one of them had fired off a weapon or come charging out of the darkness, my uncle very well might have ended his own life along with that of his whole platoon. That's man shit. You see what I'm saying? Yes. That's an alpha. That's alpha shit. Did uh, you know? Does your uncle go around declaring his alphaness to people? Never. Never once has my uncle been like, dude, I'm a Billy Badass, man. You're just a fucking weak little beta male. Never <laughs> once has my uncle been in a position where he had to vocalize that. <laughs> All right. And that's well, it. Thank, I'm sorry. A, you know, uh, no, like, no, no. It's a good story. I liked it. Yeah. Um, thanks, Paul. And thanks, uh, Shirt Guy. And uh, thanks for everybody who watched. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, we will not see you Friday. Uh, I don't know if we'll see you guys Monday or not. Yeah, I think we will. Yeah, yeah, we will. Um, yeah, we're just going to miss one episode. Um, well, yeah. I mean, we're going to be taking uh, a break in uh, early December, though, too, from... Um, I don't know. We'll fig I'll figure that out and put that out there. Uh, on the next show, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We'll all right. It all out to Thank you guys. you guys. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up. Be if sure you, to let uh, us know what you think. If you live in the U.S., have a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Love Happy you guys. Happy Thanksgiving to all week. you U.S. motherfuckers. Good night, Paul. Night, Paul. Night, shirt night. guy. Night, DP Universe. Later. Peace.